Navas. It's in glorification of Lord Ram. There's only four small lines and the translation is there, very short, but it's a beautiful bhajan. I'm not sure of the tune, but I heard one one version of it, so this is the one that I will sing. So uh, what we'll do is we'll sing two lines and repeat, and two lines and repeat. But I'll sing each of the two lines twice and then repeat. And then we'll do the second two lines twice and we'll repeat each time. <clears throat> Ayodhya Vasir Ham 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 Dasaratanandan Ram Ayodhya Vasir Ham Ham Dasaratanandan Ram I odia vasir ham 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 dasaratan nandan ham dasaratan nandan patita pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Ayodhya Vasir Ham 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 Dasaratan Nandan Ham Ayodhya Vasir Ham 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 Dasaratan Nandan Ram Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Patita Pavana Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohana Ram Ayodhya Vazir Ram 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 Dasaratan Nandan Ram Dasaratan Nandan Patita Pavana 
Janaki Jeevana Sita Mohanarham Jaya Ram 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 Jaya Ram 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 Jaya Ram Ram Jaya Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Jaya Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman. Jaya Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, Sita Ram, Saratanandana Ram, Patrita Pavana, Janaki Jivana, Sita Mohana Ram. Lord Ram, residing in Ayodhya, son of Dasarat, purifier of sin, the enchanter of Sita, the very life of Janaki. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is Canto 2, Chapter 7, 
chapter is entitled Scheduled Incarnations, text 23, and we'll also read chapter, text 24. Everyone has their phones? Okay. Asman Prasada Sugaman Kalaya Kalesa. Iksvakubamsa Vatatir to Guru Nidese. Tishtan Bamasa Daitan Nuja Avivesa. Yasmin Biruda Dasakandara Artim Arjat. Asman Prasada Sumuka Kalaya Kalesa. Is Vlaku Bamsa Apetirna Guru Nidese. Is Tan Bamansa Datita Nuja Avivesa. Yasmin Viruda Dasakan Dara Atim Archat. Asmam Prasada Sumuka Kalaya Kalesa. His flock, Kubamsa Avitiria, Kuroni Dese. His flock, Kubamsa Avitiria, Kuroni Dese. Daita Nuja Avishesa. Yasmin Viruda Dasakandara Atma Arjat. Asman Prasada Sukuka Kalaya Kalesa His Flaku Vamsa Avitir Yaguro Nidese. Tishtan Vamasa Daita Nuja Avishesa Yasmin Viruda Dasakandara Arva Arja Anyone else? Uh, 
asmat unto us beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant. Prasada, causeless mercy. Sumukha, so inclined. Kalaya, with his plenary extensions. Kalesa, the Lord of all potencies. Isvaku, Maharaj Isvaku, in the dynasty of the sun. Vamse, family, Avatirya, by descending in. Guru, of the father or spiritual master. Nidese, under the order of. Tishtan, being situated in Vanam, in the forest. Sadaita Anuja, along with his wife and younger brother. Avivesa, entered. Yasmin, unto whom? Ivirudya. Being rebellious, Dasakarada Kandara, Ravana, who had ten heads, Artim, great distress, Archat, achieved. Translation Due to his causeless mercy upon the living entities within the universe. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, along with his plenary extensions, appeared in the family of Maharaj Isvaku as the Lord of the Internal Potency, Sita. Under the order of his father, Maharaj Dasarat, he entered the forest and lived there for considerable years with his wife and younger brother. Ravana, who was very materially powerful with ten heads on his shoulders, committed a great offense against him and was thus ultimately vanquished. Mm -hmm. Purport. Lord Ram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his brothers, namely Bart, Lakshman, Satruga, are his plenary expansions. All four brothers are Vishnu Tattva and were never ordinary beings, human beings. There are many unscrupulous or ignorant commentators on the Ramayana who present the younger brothers of Lord Ramachandra as ordinary living entities. But here in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the most authentic scripture on the science of God, it is clearly stated that his brothers were his plenary expansions. Originally, Lord Ramachandra is the incarnation of Vasudeva. Lakshman is the incarnation of Sankarshan. Bharat is the incarnation of Prajumna and Satrugna is the incarnation of Aniruddha, expansions of the Personality of Godhead. Lakshmi, Sita, is the internal potency of the Lord and is neither an ordinary woman nor the external potency incarnation of Durga. Durga is the external potency of the Lord and she is associated with Lord Shiva. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, for seven, the Lord appears when there are discrepancies in the discharge of factual religion. Lord Ramachandra also appeared under the same circumstances, accompanied by his brothers, who were expansions of the Lord's internal potency, and by Lakshmi Devi Sita Dev. Lakshmi Ji Sita Dev. Lord Ramachandra was ordered by his father, Maharaj Dasarat, to leave home for the father forest under awkward circumstances and the Lord as the ideal son of his father carried out the order even on the occasion of him being declared the king of Vaya. one of his younger brothers Lakshmanji desired to go with him and so also his internal wife Sita Devi desired to go with him the Lord agreed to both of them and all together they entered the Dandakaranya forest to live there for 14 years during this day in the forest, there was some quarrel between Ramachandra and Ravana, and the later kidnapped the Lord's wife, Sita. 
The quarrel ended in the vanquishing of the great power for Ramana, along with his kingdom and family. Sita is Lakshmiji, or the goddess of fortune, but she is never to be enjoyed by every, any living being. She is meant to be worshipped by the living being along with her husband, Sri Ramchandra. A materialistic man like Ramana does not understand this great truth, but on the contrary, he wants to snatch Sita Devi from the custody of Rama and thus incur great miseries. The materialists who are after opulence and material prosperity may take lessons from the Ramayan, the policy of exploiting the nature of the Lord without acknowledging the supremacy of the Supreme Lord is the policy of Ravana. Ravana was very much advanced materially, so much so that he turned his kingdom, Lanka, into pure gold or full with material wealth. But because he did not recognize the supremacy of the Lord Ramachandra and defied him by stealing his wife, Sita, Ravana was killed and all of his opulence and power were destroyed. Lord Ramachandra is the full incarnation with six opulences in full, and he is therefore mentioned in this verse as Kalesha, or master of all opulences. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Bande Ham Shiguro Shiguta Padekamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Shi Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Draganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Rikabanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Pancha kalpa tarubhischa kripa sindhu paevacha patitanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha Shri Krishna Chaitana Pravnathananda Siddhvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gauravakta Vinnam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, Ji, Ki, Jai, Sri Ayodhya, Dhan, Ki, Jai. So, hmm. Ramadi Morti Sukalani Amena Tishtan, Nana Vatara Akaro Bhuvane Shukinchu, Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paramam Pamanyo, Govindamari Purusham Tamaham Vadyami. Advaita Machuta Manariananta Rupam Adyam Purana Purusho Navayovanamcha Vedeshu Sturlam Apadurlam Atma Bhakto Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So the Lord is one. He is one, but he expands himself into many and still remains one. His expansions are non-different to him, and they're different type of expansions for different purposes, either to fulfill the needs of the creation or to perform his pastimes either in the material world or in the spiritual world. So the categories of incarnations are mentioned, and the most authoritative scripture on that is Srimad Bhagavatam. We also have the, the, the lessons coming from uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami were in the 20th chapter of the Madhya Lila of Chaitanya Charitamriti. He describes in detail what are the different incarnations of the Lord and the different categories that each, the, each of the incarnations belong to. And then, of course, in the Bhagavatam it says, Ete cham sam kalam pum sam krishnas tu bhagavan swayam. So there are incarnations and there are 
incarnations of the incarnations, parts of the plenary portions of the parts of the plenary portions of the parts. So there are parts of the plenary portion and so many manifestations of the incarnations. It says that Ananda Dev sits at the bottom of the universe and he carries all the universes on his head. And he's chanting the glories of the Lord and also reciting the incarnations of the Lord. But just like waves in the ocean, can anyone count the waves in the ocean? You can sit on the shore for millions of lifetimes and still the waves will still be coming. Well, that is the nature of the Lord. His incarnations are unlimited. But there are principal incarnations in order to carry out his pastimes in the material world and to, again, readjust the material energy in such a way that the living entities can live here and practice spiritual life. And one such incarnation is Sri Ramchandra. Sri Ramchandra, it says that there are, Krishna expands into Balaram, and Balaram expands into the Chaturvyuha, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, Adiruddha. And then that Sankarshana expands into the Narayan features, which make up the entire spiritual world. There are unlimited features of the, the Narayan forms of the Lord. And of course, the Vishnu forms, and there are 24, what we say, main forms of Vishnu, but they're also unlimited forms. So we have the Narayan forms, the Vishnu forms, and there's different incarnations. There's the Leela avatars, the Yuga avatars, the Manvantara avatars, the, uh, the uh, what is it, the Purusha avatars, the uh, uh, Guna avatars, and the Shaktivesha avatars. So there's six manifestations or categories of avatars. Our Lord Ramachandra belongs to the Leela avatars. And the uh, uh, pastimes, or the, in the song of Dasar, um, I'm sorry, um, Goha, what is it? Uh, the uh, Das avatars by huh? Jayadev Goswami. Thank you. By Jayadev Goswami, he mentions, you know, the Ramchandra as one of the ten principal avatars for the Leela avatars. So, when going back to the expansions, when you come to the Chaturvyuha, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, and Pradyumna, we understand that these four manifestations of the Godhead manifest as. Ram, Lakshman, Bhart, and Satrugna. So Prabhupada wants to make a point here to dispel some of the uh, false commentaries given by the, the uh, persons who want to comment on the Lord's pastimes, which he says that, which they say that the incarnation of the Lord Ram is, is the Lord, but all the manifestations uh, Lakshman, Bard, Chitrugna are simply ordinary living beings, and so is Sita today. People like to speculate on the Lord's pastimes. They refuse to accept the authoritative scriptures and want to come up with their own ideas so they can present something different, something new. But it's just a disturbance. Therefore, we have to go back to the actual text to get the complete and correct understanding of what is the incarnation of the Lord and what is the identity of that incarnation and what is the mission of the Lord's incarnation. And so the Lord appeared along with his three other brothers in the uh, palace in the dynasty of King Dasarat. Dasarat was the king of the world. This pastime happened 20, 
two million years ago, in the 28th millennium of the Vaivarshata Manu. So it is two million years ago. It's probably one of the oldest manifestations of the incarnations that we read about in the scriptures. So there was a king, his name was Dasarat, and he had 350 wives. Some people say three wives, but actually the more third of the scriptures say 350 wives. But he had three principal wives, Koshalya, Kaikeyi, Sumitra, like that. Um, how did he have 350 wives? That's an interesting story. We can divert for a second. There was another incarnation on the earth at that time named Parasuram. And Parasuram didn't like Kshatriyas, Kshatriya kings. And he would make his business to destroy the Kshatriya kings. But one thing he wouldn't do is that if the Kshatriya king was getting married, he wouldn't interfere with that marriage ceremony and would leave. So Dasarat knew about that. And so every time the word was out that Parasaram was coming, Dasarat got married to another wife. <laughs> Interesting way to keep yourself alive. Just keep getting married. <laughs> so in that way, he married 350 wives. But three of them were prominent, as we mentioned. But he had no son. He did have one daughter called... Uh, what was it? Shan Shanti? Shanti, yeah. Shanti. Shanti means peace. But his neighboring king, who was a good friend of him, Romapad Maharaj, had no heir to the throne, no king, no nothing. <coughs> no, no sons, nor daughters. So out of kindness, Dasarat sent his daughter. Shanti to live with uh, Rumbapad Swami, or Rumbapad Maharaj. So we hear that uh, Dasrat was in an anxiety. He was mostly in anxiety because one of the prime duties of a ruling monarch is that just before they retire, they have to establish who is the next ruling monarch. But there was no one in the dynasty. And so being in very much anxiety, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> and of course he prayed. And of course it's a long story. If we were to narrate all the details of the story, we would be here for another week or two. Actually we have a lot of time. So if you don't have anything to do, we don't have much to do just to keep the temple up. But we can listen for the Ramayan for the next week. It's full of interesting pastimes, at least a week, more, that's a minimum, maybe even more, maybe a month. There's so much to speak about. But, um, what happened was Shanti got married to one person called Rishishringa. And Rishishringa was a powerful sage who had performed austerities in the forest. The word came for Shishtu Muni, who was the minister of Dasra. He said, there is this king, there's this powerful sage who has now married your, form, your daughter, or now living in the kingdom of Romapad. And uh, he is very powerful. In fact, there was a drought in the kingdom of Romapad for many, many years. And as soon as Rishishringa showed up and performed the yagya, the rain came. So Vishistha said, you should call Romapad, I mean, you should call the Rishishringa and have him perform a sacrifice. And he will be able to produce a son. So Dasarat took the advice of his prime minister. He had many ministers, Vishishta. 
And uh, it was arranged that Romapad would send his daughter and his son-in-law, Rishishringa, to Dasarat's kingdom, Ayodhya down. And so they came, and then there was a whole big, big yagya performed, and a sacrifice was performed, and, and Rishishringa did the yagya. And chanting mantras, pouring ghee into the fire, and chant, and uh, there was, out of the fire at one time, a very big, huge black personality came, and he was holding a pot in his hand, and he gave that pot to Rishishringa, and then he disappeared back into the fire. In that pot was what is called Avashyana. It is a kind of sweet rice preparation. And Rishishringa was instructed to give this to Dasarat, who would distribute it to his three principal queens. So this pot was given to Dasarat, and then he took the ingredients divided it into half, gave half to Koshalya and half to Kaikei. And then he took one of the, the second half that he gave to Kaikei and divided it again into another half and gave it that to Sumitra. So from Kaushalya, Later on, after they took this Havasyana, they became fertile, and two sons were born to 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 uh, to Koshalya, and that was Bart and Ram. And one son was born to Kai. Ke no, I'm sorry. Two sons were born to Koshalya, and that was that was Satrugna and Bart. Satrugna and Bart. No, I'm sorry. Scratch that out. Two sons were born to Koshalya. That was Ram and Satrugna. One son was born to Kaikei. That was Bart. And one son was born to Sumitra, that was Lakshman. That's correct. So, Kaushalya had two sons. Bart was the son of Kaikei, and Kaushalya, uh, Sumitra had one son who was Lakshman. And the four brothers became very close to each other, and they grew up very nicely in the kingdom. And everyone could see that out of the four brothers, Brahm was the most glorious, and the one that was most qualified to be the next heir to the throne. So it was understood by Dasarat, and everyone agreed, including the other wives, that Ram would be the Prince Regent. He would be the next king of Ayodhya once Dasarat retired from the duty. So Ram was the favorite son of everybody. In fact, every, each of the mothers loved Ram very much. And all the, son, all the brothers loved each other. It was a wonderful atmosphere of devotion and affection amongst all of them. And all the citizens understood that Ram would be the next king and everyone was very happy. Ram was very gentle, but yet he was very, very powerful. He was a very powerful Kshatriya. And of course, there was a many, many pastimes when he was young, as he grew up. There's some funny pastimes also when he was teasing Mantara. <laughs> so 
Jai Sisi Gornatai Ki Jai. So they grew up nicely together and were playing together as children. Gradually they reached adolescence. Then, just before the time for the coronation of Ram and the retirement of Dasarat, everyone was waiting for that. Kaikeyi, she was the favorite wife of Dasarat. Although Kalshaya was the senior one, Kaikeyi was the favorite and the youngest of the three wives. Kaikeyi had saved Dasarat's life when he was on the battlefield. When he was wounded, she took him from the battlefield and treated him for his wounds. And he was able to again re-enter the battlefield and fight. The word Dasarata means ten chariots. <laughs> Dasa means ten and Ratha means chariot. So he got the name because he could fight with 10 chariot fighters at once. He was such a powerful Kshatriya. And of course he was the king of Ayodhya. But now he was getting old and it was time to retire and set the stage for the next king who was gonna be his son, the son of Koshaya. Kaikeyi was in her chambers one night and everyone was excited the next day was going to be the coronation of Ram. But what happened was Kaikeyi had a maidservant named Mantara. Mantara, she was a hunchback who was quite deformed and not very attractive and at least. She was quite ugly in appearance but her heart was just as ugly as her form. So she was thinking, huh, if Ram becomes king, then Koshaya will get all the favors. And therefore my master Kaikeyi will be pushed to the side. She will not be the favored queen of Dasarat anymore. So she came to Kaikeyi and said, you know, this, your, this idea of making Ram the king is not very good. Don't you know what will happen? Kaikeyi said, what do you mean? What do you mean what will happen? Ram is the favorite of everyone. We all love Ram. He's very qualified. No, no, you don't understand. As soon as Dasarat now has his, the son of Kalshaya on the throne, you will be neglected, you will be rejected. And your son, Bart, will become the enemy of Ram. Ram will see your son, Bart, as an enemy and he will try to destroy Bart. Kaikei said, what are you talking about? Where are you getting all this nonsense from? You don't understand. You're so much infatuated by King Dasarat. You don't see what is happening right before your eyes. Is it a fact that Bart, he is not here in the kingdom right now. This was a plan to send him away and coronate Ram when he is gone. Because we know that Bart actually is the most qualified of all the sons to become king. So he should be the king and not Ram. Bart, she said, Bart, even my son is happy that Ram will be the king. You don't understand. Ram, as soon as he takes the throne, will become the enemy of Bart because Bart will become, is more qualified and therefore he will become envious of Bart and therefore he will try to destroy him. And you will be relegated to neglect Dasarat will not even look at you anymore because his favorite queen now will become Koshaya because she has bared the son Ram. So she's speaking all this poison and Kaikei is thinking. Finally, after hearing this going on and on and on, Kaikei said, well, what should we do? 
her mind became changed. This is interesting. This is a nice, this is an interesting philosophical principle. It's called association. We, there's an old saying, tell me who do you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. So association is really a very powerful influence on the way we think, what we do, and really what direction in life we take. So Kaikei was fine, but because of the bad association with Mantara, she, her mind was becoming changed, and now she was seeing Ram as the enemy of her son, which was not even true, simply by listening to the snake-like words of Mantara. So Kaikei said, what should we do? Well, don't you remember when you were on, when Dasarat was on the battlefield, you saved his life? And he gave you two boons, and you told him, I will take the boons when I want, need them, not now. So now is the time to take those boons. And you should ask for two things. You should ask that Bart be the king of Ayodhya, and Ram goes to the forest for 14 years. She said, well, why send Ram to the forest? Because Ram will become envious of Bart being the king, and therefore he will arrange the armies to attack Bart. Therefore, in order to avoid that, you should send Ram to the forest for 14 years. So Kaikei's mind is being a little bit changed. So now she's starting to agree with Mantara and thinking everything that's being said and how, realizing how she wasn't able to see all this. Of course, none of it was true. Just like nowadays, we listen to the politicians. We listen to the scientists. We listen to the plan makers of the future of the world. And they always have so many wonderful things to say. Even now, with this coronavirus, they say, it'll, soon it'll be over and everything will back, be back to normal. So don't worry, we'll find the vaccine and we'll get everything back to normal. Just trust us. It's like when they want to campaign for office, they always say so many nice things. If you give me the position of king or president, I won't raise the taxes. I'll give more money for schools. I'll give more money for hospitals. I'll give more money for, for welfare work for the citizens. And they lie. And then when they get in office, they give all the money to the military. <laughs> so they say anything just to do, just to for further their interests like that. So politics, plan makers, leaders in today's world are all not representing anything but their own selfish interests. So this goes on in the name. And now they're kind of come up with some new words to make everyone feel good. As thousands of people are dying every day in this coronavirus, and they're still coming up with things like, you know, trust us, we'll get you out of the problem. <laughs> So this is, you know, they'll say anything just to keep their position or to make, make people favorable toward them. They'll say anything. Anything. <laughs> Lying has no limit. 
So now Kaikei, she is, uh, you know, very much afflicted by what <clears throat> has been told to her and she's believing all of it. So Dasarat used to come every night to see Kaikei. So that evening he came to see her. But she wasn't in her normal chambers. She was in a place called the sulking chambers. Sulking chambers means if you're in misery, you go to there and you cry out your miseries. So when he came to see her in her palace, she wasn't there. She was in the sulking chamber. So he was thinking, why is she there? Tomorrow is a grand festival. Everyone is happy. Everyone's planning for, for this great event of installing Ram on the throne. So he became bewildered. So he went to see her, and there she was laying on the floor. Her jewelry was scattered. Her clothes were disarray. She wasn't in a very, she was practically, you know, very, very, very dark looking, very morose. So Dasarat, he came in a very affectionate way, trying to show his concern. He came to her and said, Kakei, why are you like this? Well, this is, this is not the time for this. This is a joyous occasion about to be unveiled. And she said, oh, you don't understand. And he was bewildered. What do you mean? You don't understand. She wouldn't tell him. He kept asking. Finally, she said, no, you don't understand that actually Ram is the enemy of my son, Bart. It's an interesting that Bart is not here during that coronation. It's been arranged for Ram, Bart to be away. Dasarad said, what are you speaking about? He has some business in another kingdom. No, no, this was just an excuse to get him away. What are you saying? She said, don't you remember you gave me two benedictions many, many years ago when I saved your life on the battlefield? He said, yes, I remember. He said, she said, I want those benedictions now. He said, well, go ahead, ask for those benedictions. And then when he heard what she was saying, he was shocked. He, she said, instead of Ram being on the throne, install Bart. And then she said, and send Ram alone to the forest for 14 years. He was shocked. He couldn't believe it. His favorite queen became his enemy. Now he was thinking what to do. He said, all right, Bart can be the king, but why send Ram to the forest? She said, don't you understand? When Bart becomes the king, then Ram will be envious and he will gather the armies and he will attack Bart and there will be a big fight. So, He couldn't believe it. He said, no, no, Ram, he loves Bart. They love each other. They're very close. They're always spending time together. No, no, you don't understand. This is a fact. So she kept persisting. Finally, Dasarat realized she was very serious. So he collapsed in anxiety and he lost consciousness. Kaikei arranged for Kosalya to come and say, see, what, see what's happening to her husband. And then she said to Kosalya, your husband, he has promised me two boons. Now he won't deliver these boons. He is a Kshatriya. A Kshatriya will give up their life before they give up their word. What are those boons? And she explained. Koshalya was shocked. Dasarad couldn't even speak. He was overwhelmed with anxiety. 
Finally, he understood it was Mantara that had poisoned Kaikeyi with these for words that were completely false and had nothing to do with the benefit of Ayodhya or anyone. So finally, Dasarath, he couldn't speak. He lost his ability to function. He was overwhelmed with so much anxiety. Finally, when the word came to Ram, and Ram was called, and Kaikeyi said to Dasra, tell your son, Ram, what is the news? He couldn't speak. He couldn't, every time he tried to say something, it wouldn't come out. Finally, she said, he has given me a promise that now, instead of you becoming the king, my son Bart will become the king. And you will go to the forest for 14 years. When Ram heard that, he said, if this is the wish of my father, then I am eager to go. This is an interesting point. You can see the quality of the king Ram. Although he wasn't the king, and he was about to become the king, and all the citizens, there were, there were millions and millions of citizens in Ionia. Everyone loved Ram so, so much that they couldn't wait for him to be on the throne. And Ram was happy to take the position. But when he heard that his father had agreed to send him into the forest and install his brother, Bart, he said, if this is the wish of my father, then let it be. I'm eager to go. So Ram wasn't attached to position. Good point. He's teaching that one should not be attached to position, but one should be attached to the service given by the authorities. Whatever the guru wants, we might want to serve this way or that way. That may be nice, but if the guru says, change and do this, or if the temple authorities say, you do this, then the devotee thinks, oh, if that is the instruction, that is what I want to do. So a devotee doesn't get attached so much to the service, but they get attached to the order. <clears throat> and that is bhakti. Because Krishna does not need the service. But he engages us because it is for our own benefit to serve. And how we serve may be one way or the other. And we serve usually under the direction of the spiritual master or the temple authorities who are representatives of the spiritual master. But if that changes, if the spiritual master says, no, you go out and preach instead of, you know, staying in the temple, or if you do this, in other words, if there's some change in service, the devotee thinks, oh, the order of my spiritual master is my life and soul. So Ram was teaching, although, Everything was pointing to him becoming king when he heard that his father had given these benedictions to his co-wife and he agreed, although he reluctantly agreed, he didn't really re agree, but he had no choice because he had made his promise. And a Kshatriya's promise is like written in blood. <laughs> Uh, nowadays, when people make a promise, just like we say on initiation day, we say we'll chant 16 rounds and follow four regulative principles. And we get all fired up on the initiation day. And we think, oh, yes, I'll do that the rest of my life. There's no problem. I will do it. This will be my uh, vow. And then sometimes we see after some time, People lose enthusiasm, or for whatever reason, something comes, maybe some offense is something, and then 16 rounds is no longer there, and sometimes we break the regulative principles. So this is the feature of Kali Yuga. People will make a vow. You can make a promise, 
if you promise to say to do something, circumstances may change and cause that promise to be adjusted. And you may not have to follow the promise. And, but of course, one should do it properly. But one makes a vow, a vow can never be broken. Therefore, we have initiation vows, not initiation promises. <laughs> So, therefore, those of you who are not initiated yet, you should think. And those of you who are initiated should also reconsider. This vow is like my life's promise, my life's commitment to my spiritual master. <clears throat> so, Ram said, yes, Father, I'll go to the forest. And so, of course, the next, then when the word got back to Lakshman, he was shocked. But Brahm said, this is the order of our father, so we should go. I should go. But Lakshman said, I want to go with you. No, no, you stay here and you take care of father. No, no, I want to go with you. The Lakshman and Ram were inseparable. Although Lakshman was the son of Sumitra and Ram was the son of Kohi Ikshaya, still they, those two became so close to each other and Bart and Satrugna also became very close to each other. And all, the, all four were close to each other also. So after some time, uh, Sita learned about what happened. And of course, Ram agreed, okay, Lakshman, you can come to the forest with me. But then Sita heard that she was told by your father, our father has agreed to make Bart the king and he wants me to go to the forest for 14 years. Why 14 years? This is interesting. The Pandavas were banished to the forest for 13 years. And so it says, what does it say? Right of proprietorship. There is a law that governs each of the Manus for the, each of the ages. So in Treta Yuga, the, law, the right of proprietorship expires after 14 years. So therefore, after 14 years, Ram would have no claim to the throne because the right of proprietorship has expired. So in Treta Yuga, in Dwapara Yuga, that same right of proprietorship is 13 years. And Kali Yuga, the right of proprietorship is 12 years. <laughs> so that's why 14 years, just, just a side note. So when Sita heard, oh, she said, oh, if you're going, you, I am your, I'm your wife. So a husband, a wife's duty is to be with her husband and serve her husband. So I'm going with you. He said, you can't go to the forest. You know what's in the forest? At night, it's very cold. And how will you keep warm? There's no natural heat in the forest. And there's no place to sleep. You have to sleep on the cold ground. And what will you wear? You cannot wear your gorgeous gowns in the forest. You'll have to wear tree bark. And there's rakshasas, dangerous, man-eating rakshasas in the forest. It's a dangerous place. There's wild animals and so many dangerous insects. How will you be able to live in the forest? I can't allow you to go. Sita was listening to this, and then she said something that was really interesting. She said, being with you, being here in Iodia without you is like being in the forest. And being in the forest with you is like being in Iodia. 
So she said, I cannot live without you. I will simply die if you leave me here. So she, Ram agreed, okay. And then they brought some tree bark for Sita and she tried to church, put it on, but she couldn't figure out how to put it on. <laughs> She's used to gorgeous gowns, fine food, maid servants, beautiful palaces. Now she had agreed. So this was interesting. She could have said, all right, I'll wait for you. I'll be still be your wife after 14 years when you come back. Don't worry, I won't get remarried. But she was, she was thinking the duty of a chaste wife is to always serve the husband. So how can I serve you if you were away? Therefore, I have to go. She was willing to give up her own physical comforts and happiness in order to serve her husband. And of course, this is actually Vedic culture. The wife will do what is ever required to serve her husband nicely and provide for everything he needs. And at the same time, the husband will do everything he can to give his wife protection and everything she needs to be happy. So Sita was the ideal chaste wife. She couldn't not go with Ram. She had to go. And therefore, she was willing to give up all that and accept so many hardships simply to serve her husband. Well, this is a good lesson to understand. Nowadays, we don't have that kind of mood in our husband and wife relationship. And so there's always reasons why people fight, reasons why people break up because no one knows what is their duty to each other. Everyone is thinking in terms of what's in it for me. Okay, so now they're off to the forest. And so they go. The announcement was made that Ram is going to the forest. He will not be king. And when Bart returns, he will be the king. When the citizens heard this, they were shocked. They couldn't believe it. What is Dasarat doing? Doesn't he know that Ram is the most qualified and it's the most favored of all the citizens? So they start criticizing Dasarat and finding fault with him. Dasarat was already in pain, knowing that his son would be in the forest for 14 years. So, and the citizens thought, how can we live in this kingdom? We don't care if Bart's the king. We don't want to be here. We want, we want Ram to be the king. Therefore, Ayodhya is not a place for us. So, the next day when Sumitra, I'm not Sumitra, but uh, what was his name? Yeah, Sumitra. Sumitra, or what was it? Sumantra. Sumantra. Sumantra was the chariot driver, and Sita, Ram, and Lakshman were on the chariot. And so the Lord said to Sumantra, Drive the chariot, go. So he left, and the citizens started to follow. The whole citizency, citizenry, of Iodia. Millions of people started following Ram into the forest. And they were thinking, if Ram's in the forest, we're going to be in the forest too. This was the allegiance that Ram gave. But Ram knew it wasn't going to work. So he told Sumantra and somehow or other lose the citizens. So, but he couldn't. So finally, Ram came to one kingdom called Guha. And Guha welcomed Ram. And uh, they stayed for some time. And then the citizens were also there. 
They were making their camp all around Guha's kingdom, millions of citizens. So Ram realized this was an impossible affair. So then that night, in the middle of the night, when uh, everyone was sleeping, Ram woke up Sita and Lakshman and told Sumantra, now we leave. So Sumantra brought and he said, drive the chariot in such a way that there's no tracks for the chariot wheels. So go through, go through the water, go through this way and that way, and don't leave any trail because the citizens, as soon as they wake up, they will try to follow us. So he did that. And finally, when the citizens woke up, they realized, oh my God, what happened? Where's Sita? Where's Ram? Where's Lakshman? Where did they go? They're gone. What are we going to do? Let's follow them. So they tried to find the tracks of Sumantra's chariot, but they couldn't find it. They were going this way and that way and this way and that way. Finally, they realized that they were lost and couldn't find anything. And they eventually gave up and went back to Ayodhya. So sometimes we use a little analogy that if you snooze, you lose. <laughs> so because they were sleeping, they lost <laughs> the uh, association of their dear beloved King Ram. <laughs> yeah. So be careful. Don't sleep too much. <laughs> Prabhupada said, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. These are the four main bodily activities. Therefore, we should reduce, reduce, reduce. And he said, out of the four, the worst one is oversleeping because it leads to the other. So he said, therefore, and he said, sleeping also is a waste of time. Prabhupada never slept much. He slept a couple hours at night, maybe an hour and a half sometimes at night. And maybe an hour after breakfast, an hour after lunch. Prabhupada hardly slept. They say even when he was sleeping, he was not fully sleeping. He was just resting. Not in a sound sleep where he couldn't be waking. You know, he would be... If someone came into the room and he was sleeping, he'd be completely aware someone was there. That was Prabhupada. He didn't like to sleep because he knew, I have to use every minute to spread Krishna consciousness and time is short. <laughs> of course, when he got sick, he took a little extra rest, but that was only in emergencies. So the citizens returned and they were all despondent. Finally, Bart comes back and he sees what's nobody in the kingdom is happy. What is going on? Everybody looks so morose. Where's the festival? Why isn't Ram here? Where where's my mother? Where's Dasara? And he's in anxiety. Finally he goes sees his mother, Kaikei, and she tells him the whole story. And she said, Oh my dear son, I have some good news for you. You're gonna be the king. He said, What? Ram's the king. No, no, no. Actually, your father, he gave me this benediction and I asked for you to become the king. And I knew Ram would be envious of you if you were the king. So we sent Ram to the forest for 14 years. He said, mother, you are crazy. What did you do? He started chastising her and chastising her. He was besides himself with anxiety and anger finally Sutrugna came in too and then they all understood it was due to this witch called Mantara and Mantara was hiding in the back Sutrugna and came and he took uh, Mantara and he started dragging her all over the floor and she was screaming finally Bard said don't 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 hurt her <laughs> So then it was all understood that this was a plan by Mantara to, you know, so she would be the principal maidservant of Kaikeyi, 
who would be the principal queen of Dasarat. So, of course, he, well, when he was, unha he was unhappy, he said, I'm going to bring Ram back. So he summoned some of the armies and, and many of the people from these citizens and a large group of soldiers and armies went with Bart into the forest looking for Ram. And they were searching, 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 searching for many days. Finally, they came to the, to the uh, kingdom of Guha. Guha was thinking, what is Bart doing? He's already got the throne. Now he wants to destroy Ram. He's making sure Ram doesn't come back and take his kingdom. But then uh, it was understood that this wasn't true. When Guha, when Guha met Bart, Guha wanted to fight with Bart because he, he wanted to protect Ram. But Bart explained, no, actually, I, I want to bring my brother back so he can rule the throne. Finally, they came to the area where um, ba, uh, Ram, Lakshman, and, and uh, Sita were. And the armies stopped at a distance. Lakshman said, uh-oh, here's your brother Bart. He's not satisfied that he's got the throne. He wants to come and destroy you. But don't worry, I will, I will destroy him. You know, Bart and Lakshman start getting really, really angry, start glorifying the fact that he would destroy not only Bart, but all the armies himself, all by himself. He just said, let me go. Ram understood, no, no, this is not actually what happened. He's not of that mind. I think he's come for another reason. Let's find out. And Lakshman wasn't convinced at first, but finally, Bart, finally Ram convinced him. Because Lakshman has a tendency to get really angry fast <laughs> and want to, wants to respond. So, but Bart, but, uh, but uh, uh, Ram told him, no, no, no. Finally, uh, Bart sent a messenger that he wants to speak with Ram. So Bar Ram came out and Bart met him. And Bart was in tears. He said, well, I'm sorry what my mother had, had done. This is not my plan. It was that evil, evil Mantara. She poisoned my mother and my mother agreed with this witch. And this is what's happening. And Ram said, well, how is father? How is he doing? And Bart re remained silent. He couldn't say anything. He knew it would break his heart if he told. He said, well, father became so morose and so full of anxiety that he could not live anymore, so he is no longer with us. When, Bar, when Ram heard that his father was no longer living, he broke down and started crying in separation from his father. Bart sp spoke some more. He said, actually, the citizens actually deserve you as the king. You are the real king of Ayodhya, not me. Ram said, but this is the will of father. Father has asked me to go to the forest and you become the king. How can I go against that? But, but, but he was forced into making this decision by, by Kaikei's evil witch, Mantara. And this is simply a plan of evil. So how can we abide by these rules? No, no, Bar Ram said, I, I have to obey the instructions of my father. This is my duty. You go back, you rule the kingdom. Bart said, how can I rule the kingdom? You are the real king. He said, no, no, you rule in my place. And Bart, of course, this is a beautiful scene. Now Bart, he had the kingdom and he had everything, all the power, everything, but he wasn't attached. He understood it was the duty, his duty to, to try to bring his uh, older brother Ram back and make him the king, which was the rightful heir to the throne. This is another interesting point. 
that Bart was not attached to the fact. So being attached to opulence, being attached to uh, followers, as, Krish, as Lord Chaitanya said, Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam Vajagadisha Kamaye. One, I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want uh, the pleasures of beautiful women. I don't even want to be known as a great orator of Vedic knowledge. These are all things the Lord is saying. The devotee doesn't want anything. Why? What does he want? Janmani, Janmani, Ishwari, Bhavatat, Bhakti, Rahitu, Kitwai. The devotee simply wants to be engaged in devotional service. And even if they have to wait another lifetime before they go back to Godhead, they are willing to, as long as they get the chance to serve the Lord. So Bart, although he had riches, wealth, power, followers, facilities of so much enjoyment at his hand as being the king, he, he, let it, he didn't take any of it and simply was pleading with his brother to come back. Ram wouldn't budge. He wouldn't, it's beautiful, beautiful. You'll, when you, if you read this section, it's a most amazing. How much love they had for each other and how each one wanted the other person to be the king. But Ram understood that Bart would not rule so Bart said, I have brought with me your shoes. So please take these shoes and place them on my head and I will take these shoes and use them to rule the kingdom. So Ram agreed. So Ram gave the shoes back to Bart and Bart returned and he put the shoes on the throne and Bart went to another area outside of the kingdom called Nandigram. And he lived there for 14 years. Without, he ruled the kingdom in absence. And what would happen if there was some problems within the kingdom, the citizens would come out to Nandigram. And Nandigram, I was there in Nandigram. It's an interesting little place. There was a little hut that Bart used to live in. It's a small little hut. There's a big pond, which was covered by lily pads. And for 14 years, all he ate was barley cooked in cow urine. That's all he ate for 14 years. And he, ruined, he performed great austerities and penances. And he put the th shoes on the throne. Sometimes if there was a great decision to make, he would go to Ayodhya and place the decisions before the shoes and ask for directions on how to deal with this situation. So, he never tried to rule the kingdom. He understood the real king is Ram. So now Ram and Sita and Lakshman are in the forest and they're meeting diff different situations. So now many years are going on and at one point there was one uh, demon called Kabanda. Kumbanda was a Rakshastra, but he had his, he had his mouth in his belly. And he was actually a demigod or a sage actually. He was a sage that was cursed to become a demon. So he had attacked Ram and Sita and Lakshman and Ram killed him and then while he was dying he said bury my body in a hole and then because I've been I'm gonna be killed by you I'll die then I can attain and he again 
came back to his, I think he was a Gandharva. He got his Gandharva body back. So Ram had killed a Kadamba, Kabanda, Kabanda his name was. That's an interesting story. I don't know all the details of that one. After some time, uh, what was it? Uh, the sister of Ravana, her name is Supanarka. She was wandering in the forest. She was an ugly witch. And when she saw, they were, oh, who are these two powerful Kshatriyas? They're so beautiful. And they have this beautiful lady with them. I wonder what they're doing in the forest. Boy, that Kshatriya, he is so beautiful. He should become my husband. So she became really attracted to Ram. So she disguised herself. She could change her form into a beautiful lady. So she changed her form into a beautiful lady, and she kept wandering into the area where Sita, Ram, and Lakshman were. And she was displaying her feminine charms. And then she saw Ram, and she said, Oh, my dear beautiful man, I am here in the forest, and I am in need of a husband, and I can see you are the most qualified. You are so handsome, and you are so powerful. Look at your arms. You can probably kill many, 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 many soldiers. And we can see that you have all good qualities. So you are the perfect match for me. They both. A wedding proposal. <laughs> so she proposed. And Ram, he's listening. He said, but you know, my dear lady, uh, I'm already married. I have a wife. And I have taken a vow to only have one wife in this life. So I'm sorry, but I cannot accept your your proposal, but do not fret because I have an alternative. You see over there, that's my brother. His name is Lakshman. He is so qualified. He is so powerful. He is even more qualified than me, and he doesn't have a wife. Go and speak to him. Of course, Lakshman did have a wife. Her name was uh, Urmala. But she was not there. She was living in a different place. But he said to uh, Suparnaka, Supernaka, go to him. So she came over and said, oh, beautiful man. I'm a beautiful lady. And you're so qualified. We can dance and enjoy heavenly delights together. He said, well, you know, I am the younger brother of my older brother, whose name is Ram, and I'm his servant. So if you marry me, you'll be second rate because I am the servant and you will be the maidservant of his wife, Sita. So you deserve the best. So you should go to Ram and again make your proposal. I want you to have the best husband. So he's playing jokes on her, you know. <laughs> so Ram sends him, this Lakshman, Lakshman sends him back to Ram. So now Suparnika, she's getting a little upset. And, she's th and then she sees Sita. He says, she's thinking, if that lady is the cause of me not marrying this Kshatriya, then I will destroy her. So she started to run at Sita. And then Ram looked at Lakshman and said, do something. <laughs> Lakshman took out his bow and then he went... <laughs> And he cut off her ears and nose. 
she starts screaming, ah! and then her hideous form came back, and then Ram and Lakshman were laughing, <laughs> and she ran into the forest. <laughs> so much for so much for Mataji. And that place where that happened is called Nasik. And today you can go to Nasik. It's about a three and a half hour train ride from north of Bombay. It's a holy place. It's one of the places where the Ard Mela happens every six, uh, 12 years, I think. And there's a there's a river there. It's it's called uh, I forgot the name of the river. It's the sister of uh, of the Ganga. It's a beautiful river. Anyway, it's a holy place. I was there. Mm -hmm. And you can go and see the place where Lakshman cut off the ears and nose of Supanarka. So she ran into the forest. Then she ran to, and she went to the one army who had three who, army of Ravana. They were patrolling in the forest. Trishira. Uh, what was the other three generals they were the three general one was Tushira Tushira Dur Dur something Dur, Durmada four three generals and they were leading a band of 14,000 Rakshashas when Supanarka came she was in you know pain and she's bleeding all over they said what happened to you she said, oh, there's these two Kshatriyas, and they have this lady there, and they caused this. So come, let's destroy them. So the armies came, and they were looking for Sita and Ram and Lakshman, and they came and they saw them. And then Ram realized we're about to have a big war. So he told Lakshman, you take Sita and you hide her. There's a place called Panchavali. It's in the area of Nasik. You can go there. And Ram Sita, uh, and Lakshman dug a cave. And in that cave, he kept Sita there and he guarded her. And while Ram stood against these 14,000 powerful Rakshastras, and he just destroyed the whole army and all their generals single-handedly. Lakshman first said, I want to help you. I don't need any help. <laughs> you make sure Sita is out of harm's way. You keep her. And he just, just dispatched the entire you know, 14 thousands to the boat of Yamaraj, finished. Hari <laughs> Paul. We went to this place called Panchavali. It's there. There's a little grocery store now. And you go in the grocery store, and uh, there's a, there's the, the, the tunnel is there. And you can go into the tunnel. This is really tight, tight tunnel. It's just one person can fit at a time. And it goes around, and you come in one way, and you come out, and you're back into the grocery store on the other side. <laughs> There is trees there too. There were some trees that witnessed that thing. There was five personalities that represented. That's why it's called Panchavali. Panchavali is also another name for Draupadi. Also Panchavali, Panchavali. So that's a real holy place. If you ever get a chance to go to Nasik, go to Panchavali. You can see the place where Lakshman kept Sita in the there. So now, all, all 14,000 Rakshasas, including the three powerful generals, were destroyed except one person. His name was, oh, Map, Amupa, Amupana, Amupana, Am, Amopana, or something like that. He was one of the demons in the army. So um, 
he had gotten away. And uh, he had told Ravana what happened. Ravana didn't believe it. How is it possible that one person could destroy my whole army, 14th, with these three powerful generals? But then a little, a little later on, what happened was Sita came. I'm not sorry, not Sita, but Suparnika. And when Ram saw her, he said, what happened to you? <laughs> and then she, tell him, she starts to tell him about what happened, how these two very powerful Kshatriyas, they disfigured her face. But then she said, you should, you should try to destroy him. But actually, they have a beautiful wife, and she's just perfect for you. And then Suparnika started to describe all the beautiful features of Sita Devi in detail. And Ravana was listening and listening and listening and listening. He was becoming more lusty. <laughs> we understand that when one talks about the opposite sex to enjoy it, one lusty's desires start to become aroused and one's mind becomes infatuated to satisfy the senses. And one becomes uh, overwhelmed and becomes just like uh, so eager that they'll do anything to satisfy the senses. Just like you see sometimes in today's society, women get attacked. Even now it's happening in India. Uh, just recently, not recently, a few years ago, uh, on a bus, five young men attacked this one girl and raped her on the bus, and she died. They went to court, and the, the punishment was death for four of them, and one of them, because he was a juvenile, underage, he was sent to prison. And that death sentence just happened in February this year. Four of them were executed. Maybe you heard it in the news. And recently, in India, another woman got raped, and the police came right at the time, right after it all happened. And instead of arresting the men who raped the girl, they killed them right on the spot. <laughs> and some people, of course, they, they went against the law. They were supposed to capture and bring him. But people said this is what they deserved. So it's a very horrible crime to violate a woman against her... her uh, or uh, what we say, permission. So, so now lusty desires are there in the hearts of Ravana. And he's thinking, hmm, I have to get this Sita. But I have to come up with a plan. So he went to see one of his, actually his uncle, whose name was Maricha. So Maricha, should I stop here? So Maricha, he was a demon who's now retired. He's on the unemployment line. He's no longer working as a demon. <laughs> so he was living in the forest and he had an experience that when Ram was a young boy, him, him and his fellow demon Subahu used to uh, harass the different sages by destroying their sacrifices. So Vishwamita Muni arranged for Ram to come and uh, take care of these two demons. So Ram, and he was a young boy, he was only 16 years old at the time, he shot one arrow and knocked Maricha 800 miles into the ocean. And he killed Subaho. So Maricha survived, but then he no longer performed any demonic activity. So he, 
he was just giving up and he was living in the forest. And when he would hear any word beginning with the word R, like he gets scared. <laughs> so when Ravana came, Marichi was there, and Ravana told him, my dear uncle, I have a little bit of a plan for you. There's this, and he started describing Sita, and then he said, and then he heard that Sita was the husband, wife of Ram. So, um, when Baricha heard that Sita was the wife of Ram, as soon as he heard the word Ram, he started to tremble in fear. Ravana said, what's wrong? He said, oh, this Ram, he knocked me in an ocean many, many years ago, 800 miles, and he killed Subahu. I don't have, want to have anything to do with him. Ravana said, I have a plan. I want to get Sita for my wife, and I need you to help me. You are a great mystic. You can change your form at will. I want you to do a service for me. I want you to go and allure Sita away from Ram, allure Ram away from Sita, I'm sorry. Attract, her, attract Ram away from Sita, and then I will get Sita. Maricha said, this is a crazy plan. It'll never work. No, no, you must do it. So Ram was adamant. And Maricha said, I refuse. I cannot listen to your order. Ravana said, if you do not do this, I will kill you right now. So Maricha stopped. He thought, and he said something interesting. He said, if I go, I will be killed by Ram. And if I don't go, I will be killed by you. So my destiny is to die. So I choose to be killed by Ram. So he decided to go. So it's, it was 13 years they were in the forest. There was only one more year left. They were at Chitrakoot. They were living there. Now, all of a sudden, they're together, and this beautiful, beautiful deer starts coming. And the deer is golden, and it has all these sparkling gems all over it. And it looks like something mystical. Sita sees the deer. She says, oh, look at that deer, Ram. Isn't that so beautiful? Ram doesn't say anything. Oh, we only have one more year in the forest. Why don't we take that deer back to Ayodhya with us? I would like to have that deer. Ram doesn't say anything. Oh, and then finally, Sita becomes a little bit more enthusiastic. Oh, please, Ram, capture that deer for me. Lakshman starts to speak. He says, you know, I don't think that's a deer. I think that's a demon. Oh, no, 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 it's a beautiful deer. Lakshman says, I know every species of life and that's not one of them. It's a trick. No, 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 it's a beautiful deer. I want the deer, please Ram, get it. So then the deer starts running away. And then Sita says, oh, he's getting away, Ram, please get the deer for me. Ram says to Lakshman, I'm going to go after the deer. You stay here and guard Sita. So Ram leaves and chases after the deer. Now Sita and Lakshman are there. And after some time, Ram, he's chasing this deer. And then he realizes this is not a, a deer, it must be a demon. So he takes his arrow and pulls it back, <laughs> hits Maricha. And Maricha is now wounded badly and he's dying. 
And so he imitates the voice of Ram perfectly. And he says, Lakshman, help! Sita, help! Help! He's calling for help, but it's not Ram. It's the demon Marija imitating the voice of Ram. So now Sita hears that and she says, Oh, Lakshman, your brother's in trouble. Go! Lakshman says, No, he's all right. He can take care of himself. There's no need. I'm, I'm, I'm here to, to guard you. It's dangerous. If I leave here, you'll be in danger. No, no, you should go. Your brother's in, he, he's, he's, he's needs help. Please go, go help him. And Lakshman refuses. Finally, Sita says, you know, now I understand everything. You're simply after me. You want to cap, take, take me away. Lakshman can't believe what he's hearing. Lakshman's always been very faithful to Sita. He never looked even above her ankles. He would always look at her feet when he would speak to her. He would never look at her. He would always respect her as the wife of his older brother. And now she's accusing him of wanting to have her and saying, now that's the reason why you're not going. And so she continues say these things and Lakshman's getting offended. Now he says, I'll go, but I know you won't be here. But I'm, I'm going to draw a circle. So he takes his bow and draws a circle in the dirt. And he says, you stand within this circle, it will protect you. Don't go out of the circle. And then he leaves. As soon as he leaves, Ravana comes and he's disguised as a sadhu. And he's walking like he's really crippled, he can't walk. He comes to where Sita is, he stops a distance away, and he says, oh, mother, I've been traveling so long in the forest. I have nothing to eat. I'm practically dying of starvation. Could you please bring me some fruits, some roots, something to keep my life, please? She said, oh, sadhu, sadhu. This is not good. Please come closer. I will give you something. She, he said, no, no, I can't walk anymore. My legs are not able to walk. And then he falls down. She said, oh, 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 oh. And she forgets. And she leaves the circle and goes to help a sadhu. But he's not sadhu. He's a sadhu. So as soon as she does that, he grabs her and then he changes his form into Ravana and he takes her away and places her on his Vimana and starts heading up to the sky. And now Sita is being hauled away by the demon. What was her mistake? She made a few mistakes. One was she was attracted by some kind of material opulence. Sometimes even devotees we find ourselves attracted to something material and it causes us to want to have that thing. Maybe it's a, I've seen even in our Krishna conscious society, a devotee wants a wife of another devotee. It's happened many times. And they lose all intelligence and they chase after, or they, they want to chase after getting a job and making a lot of money or going on some adventure, something, something material, and they give up their Krishna consciousness. So this is something to be very conscious of, that maya in the form of attraction will come in different ways to try to attract the mind of the devotee away. And if our Krishna consciousness is not strong, and I don't say just because I'm a devotee. No, you have to be strong in your Krishna consciousness. In other words, you have to reach the stage that you know that everything in this material world has no real value. The only real value is devotion to Krishna. 
and the association with devotees. When we understand that as the absolute principle and live according to that, then the attractions for maya will go away. And they will have no effect on the devotee. But as long as we are not convinced that there's no happiness in this material world, then at any time one can again be lured away by the power of maya. Maya is very strong. Prabhupada said, you know, if maya wants, she can attract you in such a way that you cannot resist. But Krishna won't let her do that. She'll attract you in a way that you can resist. Krishna will not let Maya overwhelm you, but he will allow Maya to attract you. In other words, his, his, Maya's attraction will be strong enough to, for the devotee to become attracted, but the devotee will still have the power of their devotional life to resist. And if they don't use that power, then, you know, then they're swished away by Maya. But, so, but Krishna will allow Maya to attract us, but not to a point where it will cripple us, just devastate us. And Maya can do that. Just like, you know, you've been in Krishna consciousness for so many years, and you're out on Sankirtan. And guess who you meet? Your old girlfriend again. You haven't seen her in so many years. And, and she's still unmarried. And she wants to talk to you and tell you how it used to be when we were together. And she now you are a nice saintly person. And so it would be really nice if we could spend some time together. Mm. <laughs> the old girlfriend's come back. Yeah, it's happened. <laughs> Happened to me, I was out on Sankirtan, I saw one of my old girlfriends again. But I wasn't interested though. <laughs> but there was one sannyasi in his movement. It was when he was, when he, before he joined, he was married. And he had a four-year-old daughter. He left his wife, he left his daughter, took sannyas, became a powerful sannyasi and started to preach all over America. And then one day, after so many years, he gets a call. Hey, I'm your daughter. Now she's 35 years old, and she wants to meet her father. <laughs> and But she's got all bad habits. She smokes and does all kinds of things. And now she wants to spend time with her father. <laughs> so now, his daughter reappears after so many years. So what to do? <laughs> but he wasn't attracted away from Krishna consciousness. He tried to somehow or other uh, help her to understand his new life and try to attract her to, to become a devotee. Of course, it didn't happen. But these are the temptations of Maya. Sometimes, you know, you're in Krishna consciousness for so many years and all of a sudden Vishramita Muni Indra will send a beautiful girl and you think boy I haven't seen so many nice things put in one place in the same time and all of a sudden you know your mind gets disturbed again and attracted because something Indra will do that Indra will see if a devotee is performing a lot of austerities and making a lot of advancement, Indra will send some, some attraction. He did that with Vishramita Muni. It happens, devotees get tempted by these uh, allurements, especially the opposite sex. It happens. So be careful, brahmacharis. Or be ready. Just be ready. <laughs> and it's just Maya coming in the form of just trying to remember help you remember what, how nice material life is. And now you're a brahmachari, you're eating kitchri, you have to work hard, and you don't, <laughs> and you, you know, it's an austere life. And Maya's there saying, 
don't you remember how nice it is out here? <laughs> so these are, the, these are the allurements of Maya. She'll try anything to get you back. But Krishna will protect you as long as you take shelter of Krishna. There's an old saying, Krishna fulfills all desires. So just like, for example, a devotee wants to be a brahmachari, and a mataji wants to marry that brahmachari. I've seen it. I've seen it in New Vrindavan. I've seen these ladies go pray in front of the deities to get this brahmachari for their husband. <laughs> it happens. So if the mataji wants this man, this brahmachari, to be her husband, but the Dramachari wants to stay Brahmachari. So what does Krishna do? Krishna fulfills all desires. So what does Krishna do? He has to fulfill desires, right? He does it either through the material energy or directly. So who wins? The Mataji or the Brahmachari? Brahmachari wants to stay with Brahmachari. The Mataji wants him for, you know, to have some wedding bells. So who wins? Hmm? Krishna always wins, but who whose desire gets fulfilled? The Brahmachari or the Mataji? Right. The one who has the stronger desire. If the brahmachari has a stronger desire to get Krishna, then she has a stronger desire to get him, he wins. But if her desire is to get him and, and more stronger than he wants Krishna, she wins. So be careful. Keep your desire strong to get Krishna. That Krishna Matta, Krishna Pitta, Krishna Dana Pran. And there's nothing that can replace Krishna, although Maya makes her attempts to attract. So Sita was obviously uh, caused to be bewildered. And therefore, she made a few mistakes. One, she got attracted to the deer, opulence. Two, she doubted Lakshman, who was beyond doubt. And three, she didn't listen to Lakshman when he said, don't go out. And she fell victim to her sentiments of wanting to help a sadhu. Because it says that the royal order usually gives charity to the sadhus. And Ram, Ravana was smart, so he presented himself as a sadhu who was in need. And played on the sweet sentiments or the emotional sentiments of Sita. She got bewildered, left the circle. And then she was taken away. <clears throat> These are all examples of how Maya works to trick the devotee into becoming again involved with material life. So now, you know, Ram kills Maricha and he's going back. When he comes back, he sees. Well, he first he meets Lakshman in the forest. He says, Lakshman, what are you doing here? You left Sita. I told you not to. Let's go back. And when they got back, Sita was gone. Of course, Ram was very unhappy that Lakshman didn't follow his instructions. So he started chastising Lakshman. Lakshman was really bewildered. First he's getting chastised from Sita from not going. Now he's getting chastised from Ram for going. So his mind was disturbed. So now Ram said, let's see if we can find her. So they were looking everywhere and had no clue. Ravana is now flying in his airplane. He passes by a mountain. And in that mountain there is a bird. And his name is Chitayu. Chitayu is an old bird. He sees what's happening. He knows what's happening. So he's thinking, I'm going to try to stop Ravana. He knows Ravana. So he goes and starts attacking Ravana. Ravana is thinking, what is this? This big bird is attacking me. So he tries to knock him away. But Chitayu starts really fighting hard, 
trying to again knock off Ravana so Sita would be free. And there's a big fight. And Ravana is chariot gets smashed. And then the horses fall, and the chariot driver falls. Ravana is now fighting in midair with uh, with uh, Jataya, and it's a great fight. And Ravana is like powerful, but this, and Jataya is no match for Ravana, but because he's fighting on behalf of the Lord, he gets all kinds of intelligence and strength. And he's fighting, and he's fighting, and he's fighting, and he's fighting, and Ram can't, and uh, Ravana can't stop him. He's fighting like any before. This is another interesting point. When one is serving the Lord simply for the pleasure of the Lord, one becomes so determined to serve the Lord that nothing can stop that person from serving, even if it's a difficult situation. He's so fixed on serving the Lord. Finally, Ravana understands his weakness is his wings. So finally, uh, Ravana takes his sword and cuts one of his wings off. Now Jatayo can hardly fight. And he takes the other sword. He takes his sword again and cuts off the second ring. And Jatayo goes falling to the ground in a pool of blood. And then Ravana gets back on his chariot and takes Sita away. And now Sita is heading south heading towards Lanka. When Sita was flying over, she threw her jewels down, and she threw it in the area of Kishkinda forest. There were some monkeys there, and the monkeys saw that this lady was flying over, and she had thrown some jewels down. And she was calling for help, but they couldn't do anything. And then, her, and of course, she was in great distress, crying tears, and then, of course, after that, when Ram and Lakshman were looking all over, they couldn't find Sita anywhere. And then it became the rainy season, the monsoons. And so travel was even more difficult at that time. So now Ram and Lakshman are walking through the forest. And then all of a sudden, they come to the area of Kishkinda. And one monkey, he sees, who are these two powerful Kshatriyas? They look like they can destroy the whole world. They must be the, they must be the Supreme Lord himself. So this monkey, he disguised himself, and he approaches these two. He said, who are you? Why are you in this area? I can see you're very powerful Kshatriyas. He said, who are you? I am a messenger of my king, Sugriva. My name is Hanuman. Oh. And then they explained, well, we are looking for our wife. She has been lost. Oh, Sugriva, he is the king of the monkeys, and his wife has also been taken. So he might be very sympathetic to help you, and I'm sure he can help you. So Hanuman leads Ram and Lakshman to meet Sugriva. And then Sugriva tells about his story, how his brother, uh, Bali, uh, usurped the throne and, uh, and threatened to kill him and then took his wife, Ruma, uh, away. No, not Ruma. Ruma was the wife of Bali. Uh, there was another wife. I can't remember her name. So now Sugriva says, I have a problem. My brother, Bali, he's trying to kill me. And I need some protection. Can you help me? Ram said, I'll agree to help you if you help me and your monkey armies to find my wife. He said, yes. So Sugriva tells the whole story. How one day when they were in the kingdom, Sugriva and Vali, they were two, two brothers, two close brothers, very close to each other. They loved each other very much. And then all of a sudden, this big, powerful demon came to attack the city of Kishkinda. And, and all of a sudden, what happened was, when 
he came near the city. My, my, me and my brother, we went out to face him. And when he saw us, he ran. And so we decided to chase him. So we're chasing this demon and he's running far away. Finally, he goes into this cave and goes underground. So we, my brother and I stop at the cave. Bali says, I'll take care of the demon. You stay here. Make sure he doesn't have any followers if they've come. And then I will go and kill the demon. So Bali enters the cave and I'm waiting outside. And for days, there's nothing. I'm waiting day after day. And then all of a sudden, I hear this scream after many days. And blood comes oozing out of the cave. And then there's silence. And nothing happens. Bali doesn't come out. The demon doesn't come out. Nobody comes out. I'm thinking, oh my God. Bali must be killed. But maybe that demon is still in the cave. So, Sugriva thinks my brother is killed. So he takes a big rock and puts it in front of the cave so the demon cannot get out. And he goes back, tells the citizens of the kingdom that bali has been killed, what to do. And they all say, well, now you should become the king. He doesn't want to become the king, but he is the next, he's the only qualified person. So he agrees to take the throne. After some time, Bali comes out and he tries to get out, but he can't get out. There's a big rock and Bali's very strong. So he pushes the rock out with great after, after a long time. Finally, he goes to the kingdom and he sees his brother Sugriva sitting on the throne, taking his position. And immediately concludes, Vali was happy thinking I've been killed and now he wants the throne. So Vali charges after Sugriva to kill him. And there's a great fight and Sugriva gets away and starts running. Vali chases after him. But there is an area where it's called Matanga Rishi's ashram. And so he runs to Matanga Rishi's ashram and Vali can't go there. Because many years ago, when Vali killed a demon, he threw the demon's body in Matanga Rishi's ashram. And Matanga Rishi realized that it was Vali he did it. And he said, if Vali comes within four miles of my ashram, he will die. So Sugriva realized that this is the only place he could go safely. And therefore, Vali couldn't come. So he took shelter of Matanga Rishi's ashram and Vali couldn't come. Now Vali comes back and he's angry. So he takes back the throne and takes the wife of Sugriva. And then after some time, you know, Sugriva is, he can't, he, every time he gets close to, to the kingdom, Vali comes charging him and he runs back out. So now when he meets Ram, he tells him the story. Ram said, well, he has stolen your wife. This is the same thing that happened to me. <laughs> My wife has also been stolen. So let us do something. So uh, I'll, you go challenge your brother, Vali, to a fight. And I'll stand behind a tree here. And then I'll kill Vali with one of my arrows. Sugriva agrees. So he goes and challenges Vali. Vali says, thinking, what is this? So he comes out and there's a big fight between Sugriva and Vali. And they're fighting and they're fighting. And Sugriva is losing power and he's getting beat really bad. All of a sudden, and then Ram is not doing anything. And finally, Sugriva runs and runs again. He runs to Matanga Ashram and takes shelter, and Vali can't get him. Finally, he comes back to Ram and says, what happened? You lied to me. You told me you were going to kill him. Well, what happened is I couldn't tell the difference between you and your brother. You both look the same. So I didn't want to shoot you. So go challenge him again. But this time, wear something. So he tied a red bandana at his, over his head.
to make him distinct from his brother. And he again went to challenge his brother. Ram is hiding behind the tree. Oh, I forgot to tell one, one thing. Sugriva doubted the power of Ram. He said, Ram, my brother is so powerful. You know, Vali even fought with Ravana and defeated Ravana. That's how powerful Vali was. He was really powerful monkey soldier. He was the he was the son of Surya, the sun god. And Vala and Sugriva was the son of Indra, the god of heaven. So and now they were brothers. So Sugriva said, well, how do I know you can kill Vali? So Ram took out an arrow. And there were seven tall trees there. They were lined up. And Ram went, Phew! and he shot that arrow and went through all seven trees. Went around, outside of the trees, around the earth, and came all the way back to Ram. And then Sugriva was convinced. <laughs> so now Sugriva goes to fight again. Bali's thinking, boy, I beat him so bad. Well, he must be really stupid. He's coming again. What is he doing? This time I'm going to finish him off. So they're fighting and fighting and fighting. And again, Sugriva's losing power and he's getting, he's thinking, what's wrong with Ram? Finally, Ram takes an arrow and shoots and hits Bali in the chest and Bali falls back. He's not dead, but he's, di he's dying. While Ram walks up to, to Bali and said, Bali, Bali looks at Ram and says, why did you do that? You fought an enemy who can't defend himself. You broke all rules of Kshatriya. You are a disgrace to the Kshatriya race. Therefore, you have killed me unfairly. Ram said, you're a monkey. So for killing monkeys, there's no rules. But actually, the real reason is you have stolen another man's wife. So that is a grievous sin. It says in the Shastras, one who takes the wife of another man, they, they deserve the death penalty. It's really heavy. It says that in the Bhagavad Gita, that if someone kidnaps your wife, someone sets fire to your house, someone gives you poison, someone destroys your agricultural field, six, six aggressors that deserve to die, and one is one who takes your wife. So he said, you have stolen the wife of you know, Sugriva. Therefore, you, you, this is your actual reward. So Vali couldn't say anything. But Vali, while he was dying, he said, all I want to see is your beautiful face at the time of death. Because I know by looking at your face, my destination will be good. So Vali was actually a devotee. And so Vali left his body. And now Ram said to Sugriva, now we need your help to find Sita. So Sugriva said, I am in charge with 67 military powerful commanders who are in charge of millions and millions of Varnaras. We will search the whole earth for, to find Sita. So they divided their armies into four groups. One army went to the north, one army went to the south, one army went to the east, one army went to the west. So while that was happening, there's a place in, uh, where is that place? Oh. 
I can't remember, but I was there. It's a place where there's a cave. And in that cave, there's a deity of Ram. And Ram went into that cave and he stayed there for four months. And he chanted Japa. He's got beads in his hand, but he's not chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He's chanting the names of Sita. So with one hand, he's holding his heart, and the other hand, he's chanting the names of Sita. For four months, he was only thinking of Sita, and he stayed in that cave for four months during the rainy season. After the rainy season was over, Ram came out and was wondering what is happening. Some of the monkeys got lazy and started to hang around and start eating fruits. <laughs> Uh, Ram came to Sugriva and, said, and saw Sugriva. Sugriva was also. He went back onto the throne and started enjoying with his wife again. Ram came back and he saw that Sugriva was becoming lazy and not doing anything to help him find. So he became really angry at Sugriva. Sugriva got the message that he was just trying to enjoy. Find a chair. There's a nice, there's a beautiful chair. I can see it from here. Get her the chair, go ahead. The husband should serve the wife, the wife should serve the husband. See that, that's perfect married life. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so now, Brahms chastising Sugriva for being licentious, just enjoying. He was enjoying and eating nice fruits and hanging out with women. So Sugriva comes to his senses and starts rallying the armies again to go find. So after some time, there's no sign of Sita anywhere. But then a message came from the brother of... Jatayu, whose name was Sampati. Sampati was, Jatayu and Sampati were eagles. And eagles have powerful vision. So Sampati said, actually, and he, t and he, he, he came and told Raman Lakshman that actually, Sita has gone to the south. So you should go to the south. So the best army actually went to the south, headed by, by Jambuvan and, and Hamar, Hanuman. So when they got to the south, they came to go, Koti, what is it, what is it, uh, what is it, Dotis. There's a holy place right at the edge of the, in, on the Indian Ocean. What is the name of that holy place? <clears throat> anyway, it's a beautiful place. We were there. We took bath there. And if you, if you bathe there, they say you get liberation automatically. But they only let sannyasis bathe there. The, the, it's controlled by the army. It's called Koti, Koti's something. Yeah, it's a very holy place. You have to walk 23 kilometers to get to it before you can actually get to it from any other place. So we went, and they let me bathe there because I was a sannyasi. <laughs> but most of the devotees weren't allowed to bathe there. But some of the devotees took bath anyway, and the, and the, uh, the guards, the army, came later and chased them out of the water. <laughs> Danis Koti, that's it, Danis Koti. <clears throat> it's a very wonderful place. You can go there and take bath. This is the edge. And this is where the monkeys had gathered along with Jambuvan. And when they were thinking, well, you know, we, and the message was that Sita was now, was in, uh, was in, uh, Lanka, but it was 800 miles across the ocean. 
how to get there. So Jambavan was there and Jambavan said, well, I used to be able to jump that far, but I can't do it. I'm getting old. And another monkey said, well, I can jump 10 yojanas. Another monkey said, I can jump 50 yojanas. Another monkey said, I can jump all the way across, but I can't get back. So everyone was decided, but then, then Jambavan said, Hanuman, 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 don't you remember? Don't you remember? And Hanuman, yes, yes, yes. Because Hanuman, when he was a little boy, he was hit in the jaw by a thunderbolt of Indra when he tried to capture the sun. He thought the sun was a big orange fruit, and he was going after the sun. And so Indra became a little disturbed, and he threw his thunderbolt and knocked Hanuman down, and he fell to earth. And that's where he got his name, Hanuman. Hanuman means split chin. That's where the word Hanuman means. So he broke his chin. When that happened, his father, Vayu, the wind god, came. And he was very upset at his son. So he prayed, and then the, sage, then the sages came and gave in a different day. Oh, oh, what, what, what Vayu did, he started holding all the air out of the universe, and nobody could breathe. Vayu was powerful. So then all the demigods came and said, what is going on here? Our planets are shaking. We, can't, we, need, we need some air. He said, well, my son, he was hit by Indra, and now I'm not giving you guys any air. They said, all right, we'll, 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 we'll help him, we'll help him, we'll revive him. So they helped Hanuman, and they gave him blessings. They said they gave him blessings. The sun god gave him blessings of uh, that long life. Agni gave him blessings. He would not be burnt by fire. Indra gave him blessings. Every, all the demigods gave him all these blessings, which were powers. So he had all these powers, and he was a little baby monkey with all these powers. And then he started becoming mischievous, and he started harassing the sages with all his powers. And the sages were getting upset. So they went to his mother, Anjali, Anjana, Anjana, not Anjali, Anjana, and they said, Mataji, your son... He's got all these powers, and he's just using them to create havoc. So we want to curse him, that he will lose his, uh, he will forget his powers. So they said, we'll curse him, that he will forget his powers, and only when someone reminds him, then he will have the power. So when, when Jambama said, Hanuman, don't you remember? You can do it. You can do it. Oh, yes, yes. So Hanuman, he stood on the shore, and he was ready for a jump. And he, he and now there's, there's another mountain there. So therefore, and he, he stands near the edge of the mountain right on the shore, and he starts getting ready. And then, whoosh, and when he's going up, the power of his wind was so strong that trees and animals were flying off the mountain and the mountain was shaking and Hanuman was going whoo, up in the sky and flying and flying and flying and now he's going towards Lanka. He's on a mission to find Sita. And after some time, a mountain comes out of the ocean, Mount Minda, and says, my dear Hanuman, you look like you're on a big mission, and you must be needing a little break. Take some rest. I have wonderful fruits, and there's very nice caves on my mountain. Take some time. Get refreshed. Take a little, you know, holiday. <laughs> Take a break from devotional service. <laughs> so, Hanuman... He offered his respects to the personality of Minda and said, thank you very much for your offer. He touched the mountain and went on. So 
Hanuman was so determined that he didn't want any personal gratification. So we say sometimes a devotee is offered some benediction. You know, come on, let's go for swimming a little while. You know, I know you want to go out on Sankata to do some books, but, you know, you've been working hard in Krishna consciousness. You know, you need a little break. Come home and see your mother and spend three days there. and We'll give you nice tea and crackers and some Croatian strudel, some nice things to eat, and you'll... And the devotee will think, hmm, boy, I need a little break. <laughs> but Hanuman, he doesn't want any break. <laughs> he just wants to serve. So he continues on. While he's going, he's flying through the air. All of a sudden, a powerful demon, Surasa, she comes out of the ocean. He says, ah, monkey, it's time for Prashad. I will have you. It, Lord Brahma said, no one passes by here without entering into my mouth. So you are my lunch. So she goes to swallow Hanuman. And Hanuman becomes twice the size and he becomes bigger than her mouth. So she opens her mouth wider and he becomes bigger and she goes wider and he goes bigger and he, she goes wider and he goes bigger she goes wider and he goes bigger she goes wider and then he shrinks down to a little little monkey goes inside of her mouth down her throat and rips out her heart. <laughs> And then she falls into the ocean. Jai Hanuman. And then, you know, sometimes in your devotional service you run into problems, but sometimes you have to keep going. So Hanuman, now he's he kills this demon Sarasa. So then he's going, and then again, after some time, another Mataji comes out of the ocean. Not a Mataji, but another lady. And she looks like a demon, but she's not. She said, ha, ah, monkey, ha, ah, I am hungry. And therefore, I will eat you. Well, she, she was the actual one who said, wasn't Saras, it was this one who said, but Lord Brahma says, no one passes through my here without coming into my mouth. So she opens her mouth to eat Hanuman. Hanuman gets bigger. She gets bigger. He, he gets bigger. Finally, he shrinks down to a little monkey, goes walking around her tongue, comes out and said, Mataji, I fulfilled the, the desire of Lord Brahma. Thank you very much. She said, oh, you monkey, you're very intelligent. Please go on with your mission. I give you all blessings. So, and Hanuman goes on. Now he's coming. He's coming to Lanka. And he's reaching the shore of Lanka. And it's it's the middle of the night. It's right around the time when everything is just, it's around midnight. So he comes. And now he wants, he's thinking, I have to get some disguise. So he disguises himself. He changes forms into a cat. So he's walking around, he's walking around, he's walking around, looking. And then another lady, Lankini, she comes and she says, Oh, who are you? What are you doing here? This is Ravana's abode. You can't come in here. So she tries to stop him. And then Hanuman takes his form and then slaps her and knocks her down and she she falls down she gets up she said actually you know it's been prophesied that someday someone will come and defeat me and after that that will be the beginning of end of Lanka Lord Brahma has cursed me to become the gatekeeper of Ravana because I used to be in his assembly, but I committed a great offense. So now, due to my offense, 
I have become the guard on Lanka in regard for this vicious demon named Ravana. But as soon as this monkey comes and defeats me, I will go back to the abode of Brahma. So thank you very much. I give you all blessings, monkey. Go on your way. So now how Hanuman's looking throughout the city and he's trying to find Sita. And there's so many palaces, they're all beautiful palaces. He's looking this way and that way. He's looking in the palaces, he's seeing so many different people. There's different, they're sleeping. He comes to this one palace and he sees Ravana laying there and all these ladies laying there and they're all intoxicated and everyone's asleep. So he's thinking, he sees this real beautiful lady next to Ravana. He think, that can't be, is that Sita? No, Sita would never agree to be with Ravana. Who is that? And he realizes that's not Sita. So he keeps looking this way and that way. It's a difficult job because he's a brahmachari and he has to look for ladies. Don't ask for that seva to find ladies because it's not a very good job for brahmacharis to go looking for ladies. So anyway, he has to find his lady and he's looking this way and that way, this way and that way. Finally, he combs the whole area of Lanka and he can't find anywhere. He's frustrated. He's thinking, what? what now? All of a sudden, there's a cloud over the moon and the cloud moves and the light of the moon shows its light right into an area of Lanka where he didn't go. And that's the Ashoka Grove. And then he hears a voice, Sita is there. So he follows the light and he goes and he comes close to the Ashoka Grove. He's being very careful not to be detected because he doesn't know if Ravan is around or any of his soldiers. So he's still disguising himself as a monkey. I mean, a little cat. Actually, he became a little tiny monkey. And he's looking this way and that way. He sees, and then he sees the sight. He sees these Rakshashis female Rakshasas, and they're harassing this lady who is all wearing all these torn clothes and she's crying. And they're just harassing her and harassing her, calling her names and, and saying different things about Ravana, how wonderful Ravana is, and that she should agree to become the wife of Ravana. And, but she's just crying and crying and crying. So Hanuman's looking. After some time, they leave, and then Sita's alone. Now Hanuman's thinking, hmm. So he's thinking, I have to, because he wants to come to, to, to tell Sita that I'm the messenger of Ram, and Ram is looking for you. And when I find you, I'll go back to Ram and tell him. So he's, look, finally, he thinks, what can I do? So he starts singing sweetly. And he starts singing the glories of Sita and Ram. But, but Sita is is wondering, what is this? And she sees this monkey singing. She's thinking, it must be Ravana. <laughs> he's disguised himself. Now he's trying to trick me. And then... Then he starts singing things that only Sita knows about Ram, no one else. And then she understood, oh, this is not. And then finally he comes and reveals himself. I am the messenger of Ram. He's been looking all over for you. He doesn't know where he is. She says, why doesn't he find me? He can't find you. He doesn't know where he is. We've, we've sent out monkey soldiers all over the world looking for you but I have found you. Now, please come back. I will take you back. But how do I know? How do I know who you are? How can I trust you? And then he has something. Because when he left, Ram said, when you find Sita, show her this ring. 
and then he showed her the ring and then she understood yes this was this is the this is the ring of ram and she understood but still she was feeling a, a little bit uneasy finally Hanuman narrated a story that nobody else would know. Only Sita and Ram. One day Sita and Ram were there, and all of a sudden, a crow attacked Sita and and started attacking her breast. And the her, her, her crow was harassing. And then Ram took out an arrow to shoot the crow, and then the crow flew away. And then the uh, the crow uh, realized that I have to get I'm going to be killed so he said he turned around and he sacrificed one of his wings and his wings was uh, cut off no actually he sacrificed one eye that's right he blinded the crow in one eye with an arrow and uh, only Sita and Ram knew this story. So when he told them that that story, because Ram told him to tell Sita this, because he knew Sita would have doubts that if he came, she would think he's just a messenger of Ravan or Ravan himself. So now she was convinced, and she said, "Oh, Hanuman, I, I really want to be back with Ram." I'm suffering so much here. I've been here 10 months. He said, jump on my back. I can fly. No, you won't be able to do it. He said, no, I am not tired. I can fly across the ocean. She said, it's very dangerous. There's a lot of wind up there. And I'll fly off your body just by the wind itself. He said, no, no, I will make sure the wind will not blow because he's the son of the wind god. So she's re he's reassuring. Finally, she said, but Hanuman, I can't, because I am the wife of Ram, and I cannot touch another man, so I cannot climb on your back. He said, all right, then stay here, and I will come back with Ram and all his armies, and we will destroy this whole city and rescue her. So then, of course, she still had to suffer being captivated. <clears throat> then Hanu was thinking, you know, I want to meet this person, Ravana. So he started, he, he, he took this iron bar that he found and started destroying everything. And he was like, he became a big mountain and he destroyed the entire Soka Grove except for the area where Sita was. And then he starts smashing the palaces and destroying the palaces with this bar, just smashing everything. The rock shasters are waking up. There's a chaos and they're furiously running this way and that way. The word gets back to Ravana and his monkeys destroying the city. He sends some of his generals, some of his his minor generals, and they come, and then Haravana, Hanuman kills them, and the word gets back, the generals have been killed. He sends another one, even more powerful, he gets killed. He sends this one person, he was, her name was Durmada or something, his, this guy, he, he was always drunk, constantly. <laughs> he was always drunk. In fact, he used to he used to swim in a in a pool of liquor so he could have liquor all of the time. So he sends him, and there's a big fight between him, and and it's a really nicely described in one book uh, how Hanuman just you know made him look like a I forget he just he pulverized him so much there was nothing left of his body it was just destroyed. To, it was in like tiny pieces. <laughs> I'm sure Avaduta is enjoying this. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> and, and so now, finally, so many of the Shastras are being killed. Ravana is mortified. One monkey's doing all this? What is this? So finally, he sends his son. Uh, he sent other sons, and they were also killed. But finally, he sends his best son, Indrajit. So Indrajit was very powerful. 
and he got the name Indrajit, one who who conquered Indra. He even he even defeated Indra in battle. So when he Indrajit comes, he's fighting with Indrajit, and Indrajit takes out an arrow, which is a which is a snake arrow, which is like a a, a rope, and he shoots the arrow, and it ties up Hanuman. But Hanuman could have broke through that, but he thought this is a chance to meet Ravana, so he allowed himself to be tied up. So they're taking him, and the mom, the monkeys, are, the Rakshasas are beating him. They take him in front of Ravana, and Ravana was saying, "Well, who are you? Why did you come and destroy my city?" And then he's telling him, "Well, I am the messenger of Ram, and you stole his wife." So he's going to come and destroy your city. So you should give Sita back. Ravana gets more angry, and then, uh, but Hanuman, you know, he's impressed. He said, "This person first when he sees Ravana, he says, this person's really qualified. If he wasn't a Rakshasa, he could help the world in so many ways. He's so intelligent. He's so beautiful. I mean, Ravana was very handsome." He would. He had ten heads, but he would only ex exhibit those ten heads when he had to fight. When he wasn't fighting, he had one head. <laughs> so, so you know, Hanuman is really impressed to see this person, and he's thinking. And then finally, uh, Ravana gets angry and says, "Take him away and kill him." And but Vibhishan, the, the the brother of Ravana, comes and says, "My dear brother, don't you know this is this is against principles? You cannot kill a messenger. You can torture him, but you can't kill him." So Ravana says, "All right, take his tail and tie it in wraps of cloth and set it on fire and keep him tied up." So they tie his tail. Where they soak these cloths in in this in this oil, and they light it on fire, and he's tied up, and they're dragging him through the streets, and people are yelling and screaming at Hanuman, calling him all names for destroying the city, and then Hanuman, but Hanuman's just looking around, just checking out the city, seeing what are the different fortresses. So when they come back. Finally, Hanuman gets tired, and he said, "All right, I'm getting tired of this." So he breaks loose of his ropes, knocks the rakshasas, kills the ones around him, and starts jumping from house to house with his tail on fire, setting fire to all the palaces. Now the city is burning, <laughs> and he's having a good time. And now the the rakshasas are running this way and that way; they don't know what to do. And he's he, Hanuman is huge. He took the size of a giant mountain, and he's just jumping from a palace of crushing to palaces, burning everything, and he burns half the city. And uh, but then he was thinking, "Oh my God, I forgot about Sita. <laughs> oh my God, I hope I didn't kill Sita." But then he heard a voice: "Sita is safe. Sita is safe." So then Hanuman jumps on the wall of Lanka, turns around and says, speaks to the city, you think this is this is nothing. Ram will come back and finish you off. And then he flies back across the ocean. And then, of course, he, there's a lot in between there. And then finally Ram comes. And then they want to, you know, capture now cross the ocean and get Sita. So all the monkeys come on the bridge of the the uh, uh, end of the ocean, but they can't get across. It's so far, and it's 800 miles across. So Ram said, we'll build a bridge. But how are we going to build a bridge? So they start throwing boulders into the water, and Ram writes on every boulder his name, Ram. So on every rock, huge rocks and big boulders, they were even throwing mountains into them. And they made this bridge all the way across the ocean, which was about 88, which was 800 miles long, 
800 miles long and 88 miles wide. It was huge. And it had the names of Ram. Because it had the names of Ram, the rocks floated. So it says if you chant the holy names of the Lord, then you can defy the material energy. <laughs> it's true. The, anything that's connected with the chanting of the holy names has, is not affected by the material energy. So the monkeys were doing that. And then while they were building the bridge, there was one little squirrel, some people say spider, some people say squirrel, that was throwing little dust particles and wanting to help because he wanted to help Ram build the bridge too. But he was a little squirrel, so he was only putting a little dirt here and there. And Hanuman was thinking, oh my God, this squirrel is in the way. We're going to step on him. He's just getting in the way. Step aside, squirrel. This is work for man. For This is man's work. But when he did that, Han Ram saw that. He said, Hanuman, no. Actually, you're working to your capacity. He's working to his capacity. Your service is equal. I am accepting his service. So this is another important message that Ram wanted to teach. It's not so much the service, it's the mood. Somebody might think, well, I'm doing great service, therefore I'm more advanced. <clears throat> I've distributed more books than this other person, therefore I'm better. But it's not so much the service, it's the mood by which the service is offered. The monkeys were trying their best, the squirrel was trying their best. Everyone was working to their capacity, therefore the Lord saw their service as being equal like that. So that's an interesting story. So finally, of course, there's many, many details into the Ramayan that, you know, I can't go into all the details because we'll be here for another 10 days at least. <laughs> so finally now the monkey, monkey army is char charging across the bridge and there's millions and millions and millions of monkeys and they all they have for weapons is rocks and trees, no weapons. And the only ones that have weapons is, is uh, Ram and Lakshman, they have their bows and arrows. And so there's a big fight and then the fighting is going on. Many monkeys are dying, many of uh, the Rakshasas are dying. The fight scene goes on for pages and pages of Ramayan. Different generals come out and they're killed. Finally, uh, there's a big fight. Indrajit enters the fight, shoots one arrow and hits Lakshman in the chest. Lakshman falls unconscious. He's on the verge of death. The Kaviraj, who was there, what was his name? Uh, I can't remember his name. He was the doctor. He said, oh, Lakshman is about to die. But there is one herb. It's called Sanjeevani. Sanjeevani, but it's never, it's not in this area. It's only in the Himalaya mountains. Only this herb can bring back Ha Lakshman. So we have to get that herb. So Hanuman said, I will go. So Hanuman jumps and he heads towards the, towards the Himalayas. And he's going as fast as he can. Finally, he finds the mount, he finds the mountain, but he can't find the herb. And when he jumps on the mountain, all the herbs get scared and all the herbs hide into the ground when they see Hanuman. So now he doesn't know where the herbs are, which herb is the one that is, is uh, Sanjeevani. So Hanuman decides to take the whole mountain. So he picks up the whole mountain and now he's heading back to the area of Lanka. When he passes an area which is called Satara, which is halfway between, it's in the middle of, part of the mountain breaks off and falls down and becomes another mountain. So I, when I was in that area, the people were telling me that this one mountain is a very special mountain. When Hanuman was crossing here, 
top of that, his mountain broke off and fell here. And on this mountain, all the doctors in their area, they go there for special herbs to make medicine. Satara means seven hills. They're not mountains, they're hills, actually. So Satatara means seven hills. So one of those hills was the top of the mountain. And even today, the doctors go there to get medicines because it's a special hill. So then Hanuman finally comes back with the mountain, and then the, uh, the Kaviraj finds the mountain, the, the herb, and the ministers, and Halakshman is saved. So Halakshman comes back to consciousness like that. The fight goes on, and then they're fighting and fighting and fighting, and the, the, uh, the Dirac Shastras are losing men. So they're thinking, what can we do? We need to get some more help. So they go, report to Ravana. Ravana is not fighting it. He's still sending all his generals, and his armies are being just destroyed. So he thinks, this is time to wake up my brother. His brother is Kubakarna. Kubakarna, when he was younger, he got a benediction, but it was a curse, which came in the form of a benediction. When Ravana, when he was young, he performed austerities, and he came to Lord Brahma for benediction, and he asked benediction that he will not be killed by any, any creature alive so Brahmana mentions all the different ways. And then when he came to human beings, he said, oh, human beings are so puny. Don't even give me that benediction. That's why Ram appeared as a human being. So when Kubakarna was there to get a benediction, now Kubakarna was harassing the whole universe. He was so powerful and so big, all the demigods were scared. So when he came to get a benediction for Brahma, because the demigods... They give benedictions to both demons and devotees or anyone if they follow certain rules and regulations and principles and perform the austerities. So Kubakarna was qualified. Now Brahma was going to give him a benediction. So the demigods came and said, Brahma, you can't give a benediction to this guy. He's already a you know, destroying everything. If you give him a benediction, everything is going to be destroyed. So Brahma said to his wife, Saraswati, when he asks for a benediction, you appear on his tongue and speak. You know, the wife is the better half of the husband. And so Brahma, so Brahma and Kubakarna came to Brahma. Brahma said, yes. I want a benediction. What is that? And as soon as he did, I want, and then Sar Saraswati spoke, to sleep. So she spoke, and then he said, Tatastu, which means, yes, you have, you got that benediction. Ravana said, you can't do that. You can't make him sleep. The benediction's been given. But what about, you know, that's not fair. Brahma said, all right, he can sleep 364 days a year, and then one day he can get up and he can eat as much as he wants, but he has to go back to sleep for the other 364 days. So Kupa Kainer had that benediction. So he was sleeping. So Ravana said, well, let's wake him up for that one day. So to wake him up was very difficult. And he's really sleeping soundly. And so they start coming and playing drums, all the Rakshasas, blowing bugles, making all kinds of sounds, nothing. So then they ride chariots over his body, get elephants to stampede over his body. He's still fast asleep. Sometimes you may know somebody like that who has, you know, sometimes we go into certain brahmacharis ashrams and they don't wake up no matter what. 
when I was in the Brahmachari ashram, we had devotees like that. You couldn't wake them up no matter, we would call them like little mini kubakaras, you know. <laughs> Sleeping is so nice. Anyway, that's not the goal of life, to sleep. Sleep is another form of death. So they're trying everything, blowing horns, chariots, elephants, soldiers. They're beating him with weapons, nothing. He doesn't get up. And they continue, finally, 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 they continue, finally. He starts to roll over a little, and he wakes up. So now Kuba Khan is awake, and uh, he goes to his brother, Ravana. Ravana says, destroy that army he comes out and he starts a big monster when the young monkeys saw he was like twice as big as the city he was huge <clears throat> and he's just walking towards them and he's shaking the whole earth with every step in fact the earth is not only shaking it was like a major earthquake <clears throat> and everything is shaking and falling the monkeys are running here and there. Ram and Lakshman are saying, don't run, don't run. Kubakarn is picking up, you know, monkeys. He's like grabbing like 10 monkeys at a time and sticking it in his mouth because now he's hungry. He's been, hasn't eaten in a year. So he's having monk, monkey prashad. He's just eating all these monkeys and the monkeys are running and they're all running this way. And he's just grabbing monkeys and stepping on monkeys and crushing everybody and it's just like man is everybody's in chaos and finally ram decides to get into the fight and so he comes and challenges kupukarna and there's a big fight i don't remember the details of what happened but then ram uh, shot one arrow and sliced off his head and killed this demon and when he fell he killed another thousand monkeys and also some rakshastras, he was so big. The word got back to Ravana that Kupakarna was killed. He couldn't believe it. Kupakarna was killed? How is it possible? Now it's decided that Ram has to enter, Ravana is going to decide to enter into the fight. All his major generals are killed. Kupakarna is killed. Now he comes in. And now is the final battle between Ram and Ravana. And that's really exciting. It's amazing if you listen to that, that narration. How Ravana, and they were fighting so fiercely. And uh, Ram was shooting arrows and was cutting off the heads of Ravana. But every time his head would cut off, another head would grow back. And every time he shoot another head off, another head would grow back. And he still had 10 heads, although Rav and Ram was killing head after head. So the fight was going on more and more. Finally, Vibhishan said to Rav, because Vibhishan had come over to Ravana's side. That, was, that happened earlier, just before they had attacked uh, Lanka. So Vibhishan said, well, his power is not in his head. It's in his heart. He has an unlimited source of nectar. It's in his heart. But in order to kill that, three things have to happen at one time. So there's Ravana had a brother called Mahi Ravana, who was just as powerful he he was. And if he was alive, then Ravana could not be killed also, no matter what. <clears throat> So then they had arranged for these three things. I can't remember it's mentioned in another text. And um, there's an unlimited nectar of uh, what we say immortality in the heart of Ravana. So that nectar had to be dried up. And so by killing Mahi Ravana, which they did, this was, this was a whole nother story. It takes about another hour to narrate that. <clears throat> then Ravana was vulnerable. And then when it came time, Vibhishan said, shoot that arrow into his heart. Now, Ram had a special arrow. And this was a Brahmastra. It was given to him when he was in Chitrakoot, when he met one great sage called Augusta Muni. 
Augusta Muni wanted to reward Ram. He said, I have this arrow. It is so powerful that it can destroy the whole universe. Use it only when you need it. So then Ram had that arrow in his quiver and he thought, this is the time. So he takes up that arrow and as soon as he took it out, the earth shook. And then he put it to his bow and everything shook. When he pulled back, the whole universe shook. And when he let it go, boom, that arrow flew so fast and went right into the heart of Ravana and came out the other side, went around the world, you know, went through the earth first, went through the earth, through Ravana, through the earth, around the world, and came back into the quiver of Ram. That was the power of Augusta Muni. Augusta Muni, out of all the sages, he was such a powerful yogi. So Ram received this mercy from Augusta. So when the spiritual master gives the mercy to the disciple, the disciple becomes successful. So this was the message that this was the gift in the form of this arrow, which was the instructions by the guru, who was Augusta Muni, who gave this arrow to Ram, who played the part of the disciple of Augusta Muni. And then, of course, Ravana now was killed, and, you know, the rest of the Rakshastras. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the monkeys uh, that were killed were revived by the power of Ram. All the monkeys that were killed came back, and all the uh, Rakshasas, all their dead bodies were thrown into the ocean. And of course now Sita comes back to Ram. Ram finds Sita, and Sita and Ram are united. But Sita is very happy and Ram is also happy. But then Ram is thinking, you know, she's been with another man for at least 10 and a half months. I don't know if I should take her back. She's no longer chased. So he refused. He said, Sita, now that you're free, you can go wherever you want to go. She's like, what? After all this, you're rejecting me? And she was just completely, she didn't know how to respond. She was simultaneously surprised, saddened, devastated. Oh, she felt like there's nothing left except death. She said, Ram, okay, I will prove that I am chased. I've always been chased to you. I haven't even looked at Ravana even once. My chastity is pure, but if you reject me, there's nothing left for me to do but to end this life. So, she said, so she said, I will enter the fire. Ram remained sober. He didn't say anything. He said, Lakshman, build a fire. Lakshman thinks, what's this? Lakshman, build a fire. Younger brother has to listen to older brother. That's why it said, I'll just skip for a minute. It says, after this Leela, of Lakshman becoming the younger brother, in the next Leela, he became the older brother. Because he said, there was too many instructions I couldn't follow. Because <laughs> younger brother has to follow older brother. That's the etiquette. So in the next Leela, which was Krishna Balaram, Balaram was older. In the next Leela, it's Gornitai, Nityananda was older. So, 
After that, he became older brother. <laughs> There's too many things that Ram told him to do that he just couldn't do, but he had to do it because it was an instruction. But he built a fire, and everyone is like, What's, what is Ram doing? Ram is just like, not showing one drop of emotion. Sita is just very sober. She looks, she offers her respects to Ram, to Lakshman, to everyone. She bows and she walks into the fire. Everyone goes, ah. But it's after some time, the fire died down and Agni, the demigod, comes out with Sita and Sita untouched by the fire. She proved that her chastity was perfect because the fire could not burn her. She was completely free from any tinge of anything material. So then Ram accepted her back. And then now they're all together again, Hanuman, Sugriva, Bibishan, um, Lakshman, Ram, and they, they grab the airplane of Ravana, which is a very nice airplane. It was the, it was the property of, uh, of Kuvera. And so now Ram turns to Hanuman and says, no, he turns to the Hanuman or Lakshman. He said, go to Ayodhya and find Bart and tell him that Ram is on his way back. And watch his reaction. If he hesitates in any way or shows some unhappiness, I'm not coming. So he wanted, he wanted to see if his brother still wanted him back after 14 years. In other words, he was wondering, has 14 years ruling the kingdom changed his mind, have made him think he is the king or, or something. So yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was Hanuman who went. And Hanuman said, actually, I'm the messenger of Ram. Ram wants me to inform you. He's on his way to back to Ayodhya. And when Bart heard that, he became so happy. He was overjoyed. Oh, Ram is coming back. And then the citizens also learned he was coming back. The whole city, the whole, the whole city had a festival within their own hearts, welcoming Ram back. Everyone was so happy. And uh, so then Hanuman reported back, he doesn't show any sign of unhappiness. He's, he's so eager to have you back. He can't wait for your return. So Ram liked that. So they all came on the airplane and then they were coming and as they reached the city, just before they reached the city where they were coming to the outskirts, Sita said to, to uh, Ram, you know, it's because of Hanuman I have come back. Hanuman has brought me back. I want to give a gift to Hanuman. I have this beautiful jeweled necklace that you gave me as a gift. It's one of my most prized possessions because it's coming from you. I would like to give this necklace to show my gratitude to Hanuman. Ram smiled. And then she presented the necklace to Hanuman. Just to show Hanuman, you, because of your service, everything became wonderful. Hanuman is really the hero <laughs> of the Ramayana. And so now they return, the citizens are back. And Ram gets back on the throne, everyone is happy. Everyone is there in the city, Sita's there, Lakshman's there. 
Hanuman stays for some time. He's also there. The monkeys are enjoying being in the city. <laughs> it's a wonderful affair. Then Ram, he's ruling for some time. And one day he starts walking through the kingdom. And he, because Ram used to, used to go in disguise in the kingdom just to see what the citizens were doing and how they were reacting and see if he, by going in disguise, he could learn something that would help him in his rule. So he's in disguise. He comes to one house. He stops on the outside and he hears this man chastising his wife. Where were you? I didn't see you. You were out all last night. I don't know where you were. You are so on chase. You, you're coming back to me after being out alone all night. I cannot accept you back. You are now unchaste. Do you think I'm like Ram to accept Sita back after she's been with another man? He said that. When Ram heard that, he's thinking, oh, now they're finding fault with me. So this is not good. So then Ram is thinking what to do. So he said, Sita, later on, this was later, he said, Sita, I think it's time for you to take a little vacation. Why don't you leave Ayodhya for a while? There's a very nice ashram. It's called oh, what is it? Valmiki Muni's ashram. You go to Valmiki Muni's ashram and stay there for a little time. Take a little break. And, and Lakshman, you get the chariot and take Sita. Now Sita could understand Lakshma. Now Sita was pregnant at the time. She was pregnant at the time. So now she's thinking, Ram sending me away. This is not good. But Ram was determined. And he told Ham Lakshman to drive the chariot. Lakshman didn't want to drive the chariot. But he couldn't disobey his brother. Another situation where he had to follow the instructions. This is like three or four times it happened. Many times more than that it happened. So now Lakshman's driving the chariot with Sita on the chariot. Sita's sad and Lakshman is crying. He, she said, why are you crying? He said, mother, you're not coming back. I know. I know this is the instructions of Ram. So she went to Valmiki Ashram and she stayed there. And uh, Ram wanted to prove that those who lead the world, the citizens, should be without what we say, criticism. If a, if, a, if a king is found to have some criticism or some negativity towards his name, he must clear that or else he's not qualified to be a leader. This is Ram Raj. Where are those leaders? We don't find them. But then a leader should be beyond suspicion. Their life should be an open book so the citizens know everything about them. And a, and a leader leads the citizens like a father takes care of the children. They see the citizens as their own children and they provide everything they need to live happily in the citizen and give them whatever they need to do their service and to live nicely. But when Ram heard this criticism coming from this ordinary person in the city, he thought this is not good. And so he sent Sita away. That same person <clears throat> who criticized Ram later appeared in Krishna's pastimes as the washerman who refused to give Krishna the clothes when Krishna asked for the clothes, which were the clothes of Kamsa. And when he said, this is Kamsa's clothes, you can't do that. You know, this is the king. You are, you know, you should, you should die because of this. So Krishna didn't waste time with him. Krishna took out his 
took his hand and cut off this head simply by hitting him with his hand. So that was the same person who reappeared this before he criticized Ram, now he criticized Krishna. <laughs> but Krishna killed him. So just 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 a little interesting uh, connection there. So Sita stayed, and of course, after some time, uh, she gave birth to two children, which were Kus and Love, and they lived in Valmiki's ashram, and then Sita, at one point, left the world and merged back into the earth, and Ram also left the world, and they again became reunited in the spiritual world. <laughs> So why did Ram do that? And there's a lot of stories behind that also. Uh, that's a whole other thing. A lot of time people say, well, Ram, Ram was so cruel. Sita was so chaste, yet he sent her away. But there's a reason why. There were two demons who had performed austerities. And they had performed austerities to get liberation. And uh, once Brahma came to give them a benediction, he asked, what do you want? He says, we want, as long as Sita and Ram are together, we want the, the benediction that We don't have to do, we can perform any activities and still receive liberation at the time of death. Otherwise, they wanted liberation without qualifying for liberation. And they wanted to make it a principle for everyone. So, because they say as long as Sita and Ram, Lord, as long as Narayan and Lakshmi remain together, this should be the, our benediction. So, Therefore, in order to de destroy this benediction that anyone could get liberation, Ram separated himself from Sita. And therefore, Ram and, Ram and Narayan and Lakshmi, Lakshmi and Narayan became separated. Which is impossible, but the Lord did that to foil these demons who simply wanted liberation without qualifying for the you know the qualities to become liberated that's another story that's a story you don't hear so much but it's there in some of the uh pastimes that are related to the ramayana like that and so as soon as lam and La, uh, sita was separated from ram these two demons died and went to hell and the benediction was no longer you know valid so these are some of the pastimes of the Lord today is a wonderful day we get uh, says Hanuman one time Krishna was in Dwarka and Krishna was with Rukmini and he was with uh, um, he was and uh, he was with Garuda was also there. So Krishna said to Garuda, Garuda, go to Ayodhya and tell Hanuman that Krishna wants to see him in Dwarka. So Garuda flies away, leaves Dwarka, goes to Ayodhya, comes and Hanuman's absorbed in worshiping uh, Ram. He's worshiping a deity of Ram. So he's worshiping, worshiping, worshiping. So Garuda says, my dear Hanuman, actually Krishna has sent me. He wants to see you. Please come. You can even fly, come on my back. I'll take you there immediately. So Hanuman's not paying attention to Garuda at all. He's just absorbed in his worship. Garuda keeps saying it. So finally Hanuman gets upset. And he takes his tail and he hits Garuda and Garuda goes flying back without even flying. 
And then he lands back in Dwarka. And then he said, he's not coming. <laughs> Krishna said, of course he's not coming. Now you go again and you tell him Ram is here and Ram wants to see him. So then Ram goes to Rukmini and Krishna takes the form of Ram and he says to, uh, to uh, Rukmini, you take the form of Sita. No, she, he says to Satyabhama, Satyabhama is there with, with Krishna. You take the form of Sita and she says, no. Because, <laughs> you know, Krishna has that one wife, Satyabhama. She always argues with him. If you're going to have a, they say, you know, it's nice to be married and have some arguments every once in a while because it makes, you know, the marriage interesting, you know. Just have a fight once in a while. It's nothing serious. Papa said husband and wife, when they fight, it's like two little kittens fighting. Cats sometimes fight and they push and they roll and they tumble. But it's not serious. Or two goats, they buck their heads. So once in a while, they have a little you know, husband and wife fight. It's not very serious. It's not like that. And after a while, they'd say, oh, thank you. That was a nice fight. <laughs> I mean, everybody fights with everybody, right? This is Kali Yuga. <laughs> if we're not fighting with somebody, we're fighting with our minds, right? <laughs> it's like, this is a kind of, everything, if this is the fighting... Now the world's trying to fight this thing they can't even see. <laughs> and this thing is destroying everybody. <laughs> the whole world is, all it is, is, this whole world is about fighting. That's all you do. From the time you get up in the morning, the time you go to bed, it's just fighting. <laughs> if it stops for a while, that's unusual. <laughs> but this is the nature of the material world. Somehow, if you come to Krishna consciousness, it's different. Then you can be peaceful and happy and, and not fight. But if you're not in Krishna consciousness, everybody's fighting with everybody else in one form or another. This is the way the world is. And so, Sajibhama says, no. <clears throat> And then Krishna turns to Rukmini, he says, Rukmini, you become Sita. And she says, okay. Because Rukmini is very passive. She always agrees with with, uh, with Dwarka Dish. So now Krishna's Ram, Rukmini is there. And, uh, and then, uh, and then Balaram turns into Lakshman, like that. So, and then Hanuman, and then Garuda goes again. Now he's a little, a little more confident. He comes and he says, Hanuman, Ram's in Dwarka and he wants to see you right away. Please come. Where did Hanuman go? Where did he go? Oh, he's gone. Oh. And Garuda turns around and flies back and Hanuman's already there. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get there. So, yeah, when Ra, Hanuman can't think of anything but Ram, someone asked Hanuman, do you have Ram in your heart? So he took his heart and opened it up, he said, and he showed a picture of Sita and Ram were in his heart. One time Hanuman said to Sita, Sita, what pleases ha, Ram the most? Sita says, oh, he likes when I put this kumkuma, this little red dot here. He becomes very happy when he sees that. So Hanuman was thinking, hmm, if he likes that little red dot, I'm going to get a whole bunch of red dots. So he takes all this red powder. and He's a white monkey. Now he's a red monkey. And he puts it all over his body because he's thinking this is going to please so there's pictures of Hanuman with a red red color because he wants to please Ram. <laughs> we can tell Hanuman pastimes are nice too. There's one story where in Jagannath Puri, 
Um, the ocean was flooding all the time. And so it was flooding the land. So they didn't know what to do. It was causing great havoc. So they went to Jagannath and they prayed to Jagannath, please. Jagannath said, go get Hanuman and have him come and he can guard and the ocean won't come. So they went to Hanuman and said, Hanuman, Jagannath wants you to guard the ocean. You can come. <clears throat> so Hanuman agreed to do it. So he's guarding the ocean and the ocean's not flooding anymore. So this was a special month where Jagannath only gets Kitri. One month they feed him only Kitri. So Hanuman, he was thinking, you know, I want to get some, some uh, prasadam from Ram. So at night, when everyone was asleep, Hanuman would leave and, and fly back to Ayodhya to get some Ram prasadam. And so, and he would, he didn't want Kitri, he wanted, you know, good stuff. <laughs> so he was flying back. So one night, one day, the ocean flooded when Hanuman was gone. And the word came back that, they, what happened? Where is Hanuman? We found that, that Hanuman was leaving. He was going back every night to get Mahaprasadam. So Jagannath said, all right, you can give me Kitri, but give him Mahaprasadam. <laughs> and to make sure he doesn't go, take some chains and put it around his ankles. So you go to uh, Jagannath Puri, and there's a one temple called Beatty Hanuman. Beatty means chain. And uh, Hanuman has chains on his legs. I was there just about a year ago. I was there before that, too. Twice we went. And it's the deity of Hanuman, and he has chains around, so he doesn't leave. And so the ocean doesn't flood. That's a nice story. Okay. So it's a little... What time is the breakfast? Hmm? Sunset, okay. So we fast till sunset, right? Okay. Now, you, if you can't make it, take a little water every once in a while. Water will keep you going. And uh, stay engaged in Krishna consciousness. If you're engaged, your mind won't think of anything. And... Uh, Take some time, pick up the Ramayan. Krishna Dharma has written a beautiful version of the Ramayan, which is one of the best written versions because he has such an ability to write that when he writes, he makes it so interesting. So his, his version of the Ramayan is quite nice. So today is a very special day, Sitaram, Lakshman, Hanuman, and uh, the appearance of Sri Ramachandra, the uh, incarnation of the uh, Leela avatar, and incarnation of Krishna. Ramadi Murti Shukula Niyame Natishtan Nanam Matara Bhuvane Sukinchu Krishna Swayam Bhavat Sambhavat Krishna Swayam Sambhavat Bhavam Yo Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. That uh, there are many incarnations of the Lord, and the, one of the principal one, or the principal one, is Lord Ramachandra. So this is a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, there's so many more, more pastimes. Unfortunately, I have a not fortunately or unfortunately, tonight I have an interview with someone from the United States who is going to place this interview on the, uh, she's a very influential person. And she's a, the wife of my disciple who lives in America and she wants to do an interview with me. And so she sent her 
So I'm going to be doing that interview from 7 o'clock to 8, so I won't be doing the class tonight. Okay, so have a nice day. Chant the holy names. Read Ramayan or some stories related. And uh, pray to Ram for his mercy. Ram is the demon. Ram killed the demon of lust. Ravana stood for lust. Therefore, when we worship Ram, we get the power to overcome the desire to fulfill lusty desires. There's a nice little story where Vibhishan was writing the names of Ram all over Ayodhya. I mean, all over Lanka. He was putting Ram's name everywhere. Rama, Rama, Rama. So... Uh, No, he was putting it, he put it in one place, Rama. And Ravana came and he said, what is this? Why are you writing Rama here? He said, don't you understand? Your wife is Mandodari. And her, her first two letters of her name is M-A. And you're Ravana. And your first two letters are R-A. So I was just putting your and her name all over, R-A-M-A. So Hanuman, so Ravana thought, oh, that's very nice. Put it everywhere in Ayodhya. <laughs> so Vibhishan tricked his brother, and the name of Ram was everywhere. And in, 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 put it everywhere in Lanka. Okay, Hare Krishna, Jai Sri Ram, Sita Ram Lakshman Haruman Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Sri Sri Gaudanitai Ki Jai, Ram Nomi Ki Jai, Haruman Ki Jai. Abaduda sent me a picture of Hanuman. Just today? Mm.